for a party in it? I said, hey? I oh, said, just a minute. Then. What? I said, can you do us a favour? Yeah, of course I can, Well, Listen, will you tell Mrs Walker I'll be in at Rovers a bit late? Oh, I can't do that, Chuck. Well, I won't be going in the Rovers myself, you see, on account of having resigned. Since when? Oh, since you've been away this past week. Well, I was only a cleaner there, wasn't I? Getting a new job as a housekeeper. More fitting. Going up in the world, eh? Yeah. More money and all on account of being full-time. Uh, tea still warm, Chuck. Help yourself. Oh, oh. tar. Oh, new job will cost for a new penny, do not it? I'll pick one up on the market. Do you want a cup, Hilda? No, no, thanks, love. You take your time, though. Now, where have I put that? No, you see, I'm rushing for the bus. Oh, here it is. Now, finish your tea, love. Take your time. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Hilda! I know. Hilda, Chuck! Hey, she's out, Stan. Well, already? Yeah, galloping off to catch bus some is about a penny for a new job. Oh, flipping heck. But she said it'd be all right if I stopped and... There's now to squeer as folk. Ah! You know, there'll be a queue from here to the post office when they see that advert. Like a long line of long-legged chorus girls. First consideration is to someone to get this tip looking like a clean, respectable tip. Exactly. Cook, clean and uh, generally make yourself useful. Like Hildroggy did. Oh, don't remind me. I couldn't stand a gas bagging day in, day out. Here, do these while you got the blacking out. Did you pay her uh, for all the hours she put in? I'll give her a couple of bob, keep her happy. Hey, do you reckon we'll get any Swedish au pair girls applying? You'll be lucky, mate. They come to England to learn English, not for what you can teach them. Okay. Hello, Oggy. No, I won't clean your shoes while I've got the blacking out. Hey? He's being funny. Ah, oh, you're both being funny, fellas, all round, aren't you? What's up? That car in our Irma's window. Oh, that. Attractive young woman wanted. And that was our Ellie you were after. That's your dog's home, Alsatian department. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Mom! Uh, can you hold on, please? Mom, it's for you! Newton Ridley, director wants to wear with you. Mrs. Walker speaking? Yes. Yes, I quite understand. Yes, rest assured that I would welcome any investigation. <laughs> Certainly. I'll come to the brewery right away. Goodbye. No, I shouldn't worry about it. At worst, well, at worst, all it'll be is a telling off. At worst, Billy, it could mean someone else taking over the rovers. Do you think? I don't know. I suppose to the brewery, watering gin's about worse than a capital offence. Aunt Annie would never do out like that. Yeah, I know, but it's proven it, hasn't it, love? I mean, she's about the only one that stands to gain by it. Oh, I'd like five minutes with the one who did it. Hmm. Then there's that one who reported it. Could be the same one. Notice how everybody's rallied round. Well, I mean, you can't expect any different. Well, oh, I shouldn't say it, really. Go on. She puts it on a bit. Well, she does look down on people, you know. Treats them like she's superior. You can't expect them to rush to her side. Yeah, well, I'm not one of them. I'm one who thinks that she is superior to most of the muck around here. Sorry. And another thing. Don't... Oh, Billy. Oh, I'll come with you, Mum. I won't be missed for an hour or so. No, love, that won't be necessary. You get on with your business. Oh, that's no trouble. I'll come with you if you want, Aunt Annie. Thank you, dear. I think I can manage. <laughs> After last night's mass desertion by the regulars, it looks as I shall be on my own somewhat in future. So, this is a good opportunity to get used, as they say, to going it alone. But keep on the move and you'll be all right. Hey, I brought you some salt powder. I noticed you'd run out. Now then, uh, I'll get cracking on that sink later. First things first, I get straightened out here and then start on the rest. That lino in your lobby could do with a polish. Or uh, is there anything you want me to get cracking on in particular? 
Hilda Lofer, we've been thinking. Uh, yes, you'll be taking on a full-time job like the hour long hours, you know. You know, early start in the mornings, meals to cook, late teas when we've done overtime. Yeah, on emergency jobs, it's not a cushy number, Hilda. Oh, I'm not frightened of hard work. And then there's your stand. Eh? Well, him being our mate. I don't follow. Oh, it's not fair to him. Oh, you won't mind. You've been at our beck and call at all hours. Yeah, two hours is to clean, rushed off your feet. Won't he feel neglected? Well, he's never complained before. Well, the last thing we want to do is upset anybody. Uh. He's very fond of his own conferences, your stand. Mm. Well, yeah, I suppose he is. <laughs> yes, well, we don't want to make it difficult for anybody, so uh, I think it's best if we find someone else, love. And someone <laughs> as good as you, but yeah. with no ties. <laughs> you know what I mean? We take some looking after, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I'm not wanted, then. Well, it, it wouldn't be right, would it, love? Now, let's see, what did we organise now? Uh, what do we reckon on? 30 bob for the... Uh, two quid... For the hours you put in, thank you, love. Ta. And uh, don't forget, you did the carpet and all, it came up a treat. Yeah, of course it did, that saved us a dry cleaning bid. Ten bob. A uh, quid, yeah, that's, that should be enough. Very generous of you, Len. Happen you're right about Stan. Oh, we know he's easy going, love. But there are limits, aren't there? Trouble is, you see, I've... Uh... I packed my cleaning in at the Rovers, thinking I'd be too busy here. Now I won't be. Oh, don't worry about it, love. You go and ask Annie Walker for your job back. Hey, I bet she was sorry to lose you in the first place. Ta. Well, now you know the whole story, yeah? No crowing over an hour, is there? I oh, wouldn't no. dream of this time. You know, uh, let her flight, yeah? Yes, of course. We and uh, don't let on I've been doing explaining like, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> it hasn't taken him long to find out Annie Walker's fiddling the flipping gin, has it? No, not that I think she has. Well, you're in the minority, Stan. Whoever did it's driven off most of the regulars. Mm -hmm. Tatlock let me know that he was going to the flying horse, the turncoat. Mm -hmm. We don't know where the others are drinking. Hello, Joe. Stan. Well, you don't want me Sure. Let her down lightly. He'd be lucky. She'd be the first one to gloat if it was anybody else. I am crowing the loudest. Uh, <clears throat> is, uh, is Mrs. Walker in, please? Uh, no, love. Not at the moment. Uh, can I get something for you? Oh, no, Ta, no. No, I just wanted to see Mrs. Walker about uh, somewhat private. Well, she shouldn't be long, Gilda. We're expecting her back shortly. Oh, I'll wait then. By all means, love. Have a sit down. Do you ever get the feeling we've been here before? Mm. Well, that's the setup, darling. Pardon? Yeah, Miss Hutchinson. So, as well as the cleaning, there would be three meals a day? For my partner and myself, yeah. Can you cope? Oh, I'm sure I can. Uh, and the shopping? Oh, well, we'll leave that to you. You get an allowance to buy in. I suppose you've done a bit of this, then, housekeeping. I've had considerable experience, yes. What do I ask you now, then? Me, the interviewer. Me first time. Well, there are my references, but I don't have those with me because I saw your advert as I was passing the shop. Oh, well, miss... Um, can you come round at seven o'clock tonight? I could. Oh, good. Ray will be there, then. Uh, oh? Mr Langton, my partner, he shares the house, you see. Then he can meet you and we can look over your credentials. I'll bring them with me. I'm sure you'll find them uh, suitable. I'm sure we will. All right, seven o'clock, then. I'll be here. Ah, oh, yes. Begins with a G. Oh, don't ask me, love. I'm ignorant. <laughs> oh, well, uh, could I have a word, Mrs. Walker? Now, I do know there is some pay owing to you, Mrs. Elkerton, and rest assured it will be dealt with as soon as possible. I'll send it round probably this afternoon. Yeah, but, I mean, I'd appreciate it if you didn't press it just at this instant, if you don't mind, dear. Come on, love. Come on. How did it go to brewery? So, so. Well, that tells me a lot, doesn't it? Well, they won't be serving an eviction order just yet. Meaning? 
We've all got to wait for the outcome of the prosecution. Newton and Ridley's just wanted to know the facts. Well, there's not a lot you could tell them, was there? No, Billy, there wasn't. And what's the date for the um, prosecution, then? It isn't fixed yet. I'm going to be informed in due course. So we just have to be patient. Quiet. Very pleasant man, the director. He seemed as upset as I am. I'm not surprised. Any pub of his that gets a bad reputation and bang goes his profits. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, Mo. Yes, well, he did touch on that aspect. Well, they're not going to be pleased with this week's returns. Sales well down. The staff have to be paid whether they're busy or not. Talking about the staff, mm. one of your problems is a cleaning woman. Now, I happen to know that Hilda Ogden wouldn't mind coming back. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Hey, Dodo, give us a light bottle while you're on the pumps. Hello, Stan. Hello, Stan. Give us half a bottle with us, will you? Hang on, hang on. I've only got one pulling on. Hey, Dawn, a bottle for Stan here. Five, was it, Arthur? No, four and a Jill. Tommy's your naked, but of course he always does when it is. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's bouncing it here, isn't it? Oh, it gets busy later on. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Here anyway, stand uh, the corner of your street, your mark. Ah, uh, well, the road is a bit dodgy at the moment, you know, what with one thing and another. I heard Annie Walker's forehead. Ah, uh, well, that's one of them, you see. You, you can't soap in that atmosphere. Oh, no. One fella said it's like a big fridge with tables. Now, who's paying for this lot? It's Tommy's shelf. <laughs> Catch me housekeeping for a, a couple of husky bachelors with your reputation. What reputation? After a hard day's slog, we've got no energy to catch anyone. Ah, we know you're dying to be hijacked away from all this lot and <laughs> dragged into our harem. Ah. No chance. I do enough skivvying for Cyril. Who's talking about skivvying? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Len. What for, love? For a show of loyalty, and you too, Ray. It's very rewarding to find someone dismissing the ugly rumours that are flying around. Hello, we're on the New Year's honours list. Anyway, this Miss Hutchinson, she's coming back at about seven o'clock tonight to see if she's got the job or not. Oh, well, I'm easy. She's all you say she is. I suppose that's what we're looking for. Aye, like you say, that's what we're looking for. Sam again, Chuck. Hiya, Len. Hi, right, is Am OK, Betty? Oh, love. It's only they've run out of balm cake, so we'll have to make do with bread rolls. Yeah. There's somebody asking about you in Cornish shop. Who that then? Stranger to me, something about the advert. Oh, another widow twanky. Hey? Nothing. Anyway, Maggie Clegg sent her up to your house. Hmm. She's out of luck. Len has already found somebody. Oh, come in. <laughs> come in, Mrs. Walker. Come in there. Have a seat. <laughs> I think you'll find that in order. Oh, yeah, me pay. <laughs> I'm sorry to have left it so long, but I have had other things on my mind. Oh, I understand. It's quite all right. And you'll want this, won't you, for your new employers? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I, I wanted to see about that. Working for Mr Fairclub, I believe. Uh, yeah, well, uh, as a matter of fact, that's all fell through. <laughs> I uh, realised I'd be taking on too much. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a free agent again, like, uh, open to offers. Like. <laughs> At the uh, Rovers, for instance? Oh, well, of course, that'd be up to you, but uh, I am available. And you do know my routine. Well, I can see no reason why we shouldn't accommodate you. Oh. Oh, well, I, I could start tomorrow if uh, that's all right with you. By all <laughs> means. Well, I'll see you bright and early in the morning then, Mrs. Ogden. Yeah. Oh, wait, Mrs. Walker. Mm -hmm. My card. Oh, yes, of course. You know, dear. I thought you were being foolish when you first told me you were leaving the Rovers. Yeah, well, we do some daft tricks on impulse, don't we? <laughs> and I never really thought that you were the type that Len and Ray had in mind. Oh. <laughs> I'll see myself out. Bye-bye. All right. Ta-da! <laughs> well, what's wrong with my type? Miss Fletcher, is it? Uh, Georgina Fletcher. Gina to me friends. Oh, uh, what about employers? Oh, well, that depends if they're uh, friendly employers. <coughs> well, you're certainly not going to have to worry on that score, uh, Gina. Now then, uh, 
About qualifications, you have got qualifications of some sort, haven't you? I've done housework, yeah. Oh, good. I suppose uh, one house is very much like another, isn't it? Uh, floors and that. Yeah. Well, then there was the holiday camp. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, last summer on the chalets, a chalet made. Even better. Seven weeks I did there. Oh, <clears throat> well, it's uh, all experience, isn't it? Professional experience, it all helps. Seven weeks, you say? Well, does that qualify? <clears throat> well, it's like this, uh, Gina. It's not only my house. It uh, has to be a mutual decision between me and my partner. We, uh, we may have to decide upon somebody with more... Uh, Experience, Gina. Oh, I've brought a reference. Oh, that's good. That's very good, yes. Uh, from the manager of the holiday camp. He wrote me out a smashing letter. Oh, it'll impress my partner, that will, her reference. Yeah, it's a great place there. I had a smashing time. Hey, you know, one week I entered for the Miss Swimming Pool contest for a laugh, and I came second. <clears throat> oh, my word. You certainly caught the sun, didn't you? Yeah, well, photos always do make me look a bit skinny. Oh, I don't know, Gina. You, uh... You suit a bikini. Uh, look, uh, why don't you pop back this evening and meet Len, that's me oppo, and we'll let you know one way or the other. Oh, well, fine. Well, I'll see you then, then. Bye. Bye-bye. Hope I'm lucky. Uh, all applicants do have a fair chance. Wow. Jerry, don't uh, rush yourself. I'll get him in if I can get all of this bloody palm in. Sub up. Can you jump back at the Rovers? How do you look good? Mrs. Here Walker, we go. come round to see me. Ah, she can be very generous, our Annie, you know. She's not giving that away. I work hard for me, Molly. Oh, I know you do, love. I mean, she has given you your job back, hasn't she? Ah, well, I don't know. She's deep, is that one. You never can tell with her. It's all right having her for me employer, but I don't have to make friends with her sort. No, you might be right. She did water the gin, didn't she? Ah, uh, watch it. Well, I'm not the only one what thinks that. Well, you're not drinking there for a start. Ah, well, I like a pub that's lively, you know, something like this one. Hello, love. Oh, I'm making the best of it, Stan. Just turn the wife's door, oh. What a lovely pub you've got. <laughs> Too lively. Oh. Take me life in my hands when I come from behind the bar. Yeah, you do. Hey, you big lump. Move your back, Joe, Joe. Ah, she's a sport, isn't she? So I noticed. Oh, I've known her for years, you know, up and round her place. Oh, were you? And the milk round your closet, you're one of my customers. Oh, well, there's no need to be familiar. No, I suppose not. You having a drink? My tail. Fine. If it's not too much trouble for Joe, Joe. We'll be with you in a minute, though. I don't know, I can't get served at my own local now. We can always go elsewhere, aren't we? Yeah, and I know when my customer will be welcome and all. The rovers return. <laughs> They rue the day they were funny with me. The one that's been, been served now. Oh, yeah. More in, like, you know. Yeah, I know him. Do you? Well, I would, wouldn't I? A yeah. number of times I've told him off for traipsing his muddy boots across my clean floor. Say that again. At work. He delivers the barrels, works for the brewery. Oh, he does, does he? Yeah. Why, what's up? He's just said he bet that the Rovers will rule the day they upset him. <laughs> that could mean anything. It could mean that dodgy gin, couldn't it? My nose a job. What's your Miss Fletcher like? Ah, she has a good reference. Well, you just have to compare them then, won't we? I see who suits best. Hey, maybe we'll get some more applicants. Or choose one of these two. Not about time to. You know, if there's one thing I eat, it's dirty flaming dishes. Ah, well, it's your day for fatigues, Leonard. Just for the dishes alone, I'd settle for King Kong in a frilly apron. <sighs> so you don't want me to tell him I've heard that? Look, it's not our problem, Stan. Keep out of it. What, well, send out? Well, you could be wrong, and even if you're right, you'll get no thanks for it. Eh? Well, we never do round our street. It's never good old us. Oh, no. The more you do for folk, the more you get taken for granted. And we are, Stan. They treat us like nobodies. You've got to admit it. I wouldn't put it as strongly as that. And if you are wrong, and it gets back to Arthur Burroughs, you're going to have him on your neck. Why does that, isn't it? Don't know about you, Chuck, but in future, I'm just going to get on with my work, not bother nobody, and keep myself to myself. You get no thanks. Must be the rush hour. Mrs. Walker. Oh! Mrs. Turpin. 
I don't quite know how to put this. Yeah? An unpleasant duty for me. Oh. I'm afraid I have to give you a week's notice. Me? At 8.30 last night, the staff outnumbered the customers. Now, that is a situation that simply cannot continue. And I'm the one to go, am well, I? Well, I have given it careful thought. I see. Well, let's get one thing straight. I'm not getting the sack, am it because you suspect me of all this gin business. Oh, no, I assure you, that's certainly never entered into it. Well, what are you sacking me for, then? I am the senior. Precisely. And as such, you get the higher salary. Although I like the staff here to think they get the same, you are, in fact, on a higher rate. <laughs> I was. It's a simple matter of economics, my dear. I just cannot afford two assistants. So the cheap one stays. Well, bed has proved very popular with the customers, those we have. Oh, yes. She dresses to attract them all right. If you... Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, I wouldn't mind living there, out of the cold. Frolicking on the beach in my string vest. And starving, don't forget, burst pipes are your bread and butter, mate. Ah, uh, three cheers for the British winter. Long live the outside lads. Action stations. Don't get up. I'll go. <coughs> That's uh, Mr Langton, my partner. Good evening, Mr Langton. Good evening. Where do we start? I've brought my references this time. Oh, good. Good. Uh, sit down, make yourself comfy. Thank you. Right. Here we are. The top one is a diploma. A uh, diploma. Hmm. For the domestic science classes I attended. A uh, diploma. The others are from various residences. Oh, all um, highly respectable, yes. Uh, well, I, I feel I must tell you that uh, we have another applicant coming, and it wouldn't be fair to make a decision before we see her, would it? Uh, no. So if we pick you, when can you start? Um, uh, next Monday, if that would be convenient. Oh, fine. We can struggle along till then, can't we, partner? Oh, yes. Uh, excuse me. Uh, <coughs> a moment. Mm. <coughs> <gasps> that was a dash. Oh, you must be Len. Hello, Len. Hello. Hello. Miss Fletcher, I gathered that. Uh, Gina. Gina. No, I was just saying to Miss uh, Husk isn't here. You both come for the same job. A uh, very difficult decision for us. Very difficult. Uh, I would like to point out that the uh, housekeeper would be responsible for the uh, for the house uh, when we're away on business. We do travel a lot, you know, uh, Doncaster, Dewsbury, and other exotic places, and uh, it could be a very big responsibility. It wouldn't worry me. Uh, there would be no meals to prepare on those days. Does that mean a deduction in the wages? Oh, no, no, no. We'll, uh, no, we, we'll pay the her top money for the right girl. <laughs> well, then it seems that uh, Miss Huskisson is highly recommended. Yes, and uh, I've got Miss Fletcher's credentials. So all that we have to do is to choose between the two. It's a very difficult decision. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Very difficult. Well, I suppose the Weatherfield Gazette will have a field day. Is that uh, what I think it is, Mum? You are informed that your case comes up for hearing at 10.30 a.m. on Monday before the Justices of the Peace. You are instructed to attend. Failure to do so may incur a penalty. Imprisonment or a fine not exceeding... See overleaf. <laughs> to think I've managed to live a lifetime without once being in the dock. I wonder, will I be called the accused, do you think? Oh, Auntie Anna, you're not worried about the Weatherfield Weekly Liar, are you? No, Lucille. As a matter of fact, I'm not. Though, as a general rule, I'm petrified at the thought of being pilloried in the local press. Oh, Mum, you're living back in the past when it was a scarlet sin to get your name in the papers, like... Uh... What will all the friends and neighbours think? Yes, Billy. Well, keeping up appearances, it may sound very silly and snobbish or something. But the fact remains that it's a matter of hard work and heartbreak. 
Why bother then? Respectability. The struggle to get it and the struggle to keep it. You wonder why millions of my lot drop out. Who needs respectability? Society does. It's the framework of society. What are you trying to say then? You don't mind your name in the paper. Because, Lucille, I am innocent. Fear is the companion of the guilty. Now, if you'll both excuse me, I think I'll go and lie down. I really am feeling... Well, I'm 100% certain she's innocent, but I reckon the prosecution must have a heck of a tight case against her. Well, they wouldn't bother to prosecute Kid if they weren't absolutely sure of getting a conviction. Mm. Oh, blow it. Life's too short. Let's go and live it up. Hey! Not an A, I'm a Lucille. And Evan has lent you to us. Mm? Do you happen to know if Len and Ray are seeing them birds today? It's not an audition for strippers, you know. It's to select an housekeeper. One of them's coming in to make the breakfast and the other's coming in to make the tea. Oh. Oh, yes, I think I'm well out of that doing for Fairclough and Langton, Caper. I could see the writing on the wall, you know. I sense things like having got the psychic from my mother's side. Oh, aye. The moving finger writes and having wrote moves on. That were one of her sayings. Nobody tells me anything. Of course, I were too close to home for them, you see. That were my drawback. Might have been their downfall. Who's? No names, no pack drill. Len and Ray. Well, don't let on how you forced it out of me, will you? Oh, hey, you know, this squeegee is shot. This is the second one I've worn to the bone in two years. Look at it, clapped out squeegee. You know, they reckon it's a poor workman that blames his tools, Hilda. I don't know about blaming them. Ray Langton's always forgetting them. I'll just nip round with these, Billy. Hey, will you work as like? Give us some air. Hey, hey. Do you know, he never gives up. Where do all these beer bottle tops come from? Off beer bottles. Well, you want to you get rid of them when you finish with them, don't you? Well, they're all yours. I'll have a sup bottle bevy if I can avoid it. That's not the point. That half gives the wrong impression, doesn't it? I mean, all those fag ends and the beer bottle tops. Which is why we're getting a housekeeper, isn't it? Amongst other things. I mean, if, the, if she thinks she's got a couple of yobbos to look after, we've had it, haven't we? If who thinks? Well, Miss Thingy or uh, uh, what's her name? Gina. Gina. She's not Italian, is she? Italian? Oh, come off it. Arparay's full of Ginas. Is she from Arparay? Well, I don't know. But she's not Italian. Uh, no. Do you think she'll turn up? Why shouldn't she? Well, I mean, we did say nine sharp, didn't we? And we did say we were dashing off to work, didn't we? Well, I mean, <clears throat> we didn't say on the dot at nine. I mean, not exactly on the dot. Fair's fair. The odd minute or two isn't going to fetch the bailiffs in. What time is it now? Just gone 25 past, roughly. Hey, do you still need this uh, permutations that pay? Have you got one? We'll take any eight from 16, you said. We'll be quids in, you said. Well, we won. Yeah, three pound five. Well, it's better than falling off a cliff with a stick of celery up your nose, isn't it? It cost eight quid for the perm. Oh. Hey, I'm not breaking up. Haven't you started yet? <laughs> oh, Give me all these birds of yours, the once over. They're not birds. They're housekeepers. Oh, of course they are. Yeah, it's this trade's description. You've got to call them something, I suppose. Look, what do you want, Billy? I mean, now, exactly. Uh, he's yours. Hey, you left him on the bar last night. Yeah, thanks very much. Hey, what, Samuel, you've got stuffed under it. Deep sprung newspapers. Hey, oh. Billy, will you do us a favour, mate? Oh, what? You're on a four-minute mile in that direction. Go on, up it. What, after lugging a dirty great pair of pliers all the way from Rovers to here? Yeah. Oh, all right, mates. I don't want to put the mockers on it. Put the mockers on what? Whatever you've got in mind. We are choosing one housekeeper out of two. Oh, yeah. Morning. Oh, hello. Hello. Decisions, decisions. It's that way. Hmm? The street. Oh, yeah. See you, doll. Funny fella. Oh, he's all right, love. He's just a little bit shy when he's meeting new people, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Hey! That's not the time, no, is it? Oh, that clock's fast, love. It's been wrong for days, hasn't it? Oh, yes, I was going to mention that to you earlier mm. on. Oh, it's these dark mornings. They throw me completely. I wake up, think to myself it's still dark, and then I just... I just go back, back to, to sleep, sleep again. <laughs> yeah, we have the same trouble these dark mornings, don't oh, we? Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, well, this isn't feeding me master's faces, is it? You must both be starving. Uh, why don't you two squat down with your newspaper for a while, and I'll get a quick fry going. Miss uh, Thingy? Uh, Gina? Gina, yeah. You haven't got turn over all. Uh, they still wear pennies, don't they? You know, housecoats. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I just got dressed and came as I was. Uh, well, it, it probably saves a lot of time. Of course it does, saving the time putting on overalls and things like that. Hey, I've not caught me tights at the back of her. 
I wondered why you mentioned overalls. I know they're fine, lovey. I was just wondering why you didn't have, you know, uh, little things. To uh, well, a lot of people do reckon that overalls tend to restrict the freedom of the movement, you know. Yeah, I mean, overalls aren't anyone's cup of tea, are they? I'll get you breakfast. <sighs> Uh, you bump into any of them? Uh, there's only two. Um, what's that enigmatically are all about? Well, there's only two of them. Uh, one this morning, one this afternoon. I just met this morning. I didn't exactly bump into her. She did this rather nifty square tango right round me. Oh, what are you rabbiting on about? You haven't got an inkling, have you, love? Birds. This one had the sort of assets I would not mind bumping into. Do you know something? Most of the men I know spend morning, noon and night thinking about it, talking about it and making jokes about it. But when they get the opportunity to do something about it, they are pathetic. All I wanted to know was what this girl was like at housekeeping. There's other things in life, you know, besides that. Betty Turpin pulls a better pint than you do, kid. She leaves you standing when it comes to stock taking. It'll take you ten years to learn what she knows about running a pub. All right, I'm stupid. Yes, and she's got the chop and you've still got the job. Why have you kept me on? Because your tangible assets can be seen from where I'm standing. Look, a bloke comes into the pub on his own, stands at the bar, drinks a pint, right? Probably doesn't talk to anybody. Right, now, in question, what is our lad thinking about? The paintings of Leonardo da Vinci, the music of Beethoven, or the speed of light? Or a chance of bumping into the barmaid on his way home? You don't mind if I sit with you, do you? <laughs> right, then, you two get stuck in now. All right. Hey, it's a terrible habit when people are eating, but, um... Do you mind if I, uh... Oh! <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hey, I knew I'd forget something. Oh, well, it won't still be warm, but if we wish hard enough, it might still be wet. I brewed a pot of tea first and forgot to bring it. Hey, I wish I could give you a barrel load of sorries, Mr. Fairclough. I know you men like a good stiff brew before you go off to work. It must be all the excitement and rushing about. Oh, you've done justice to yours, Mr. Langton. Filled your boots right up. Oh, yes. Well, once I know what you like and how you like it done, well, we'll be all right then, won't we? I'm afraid my eyes are bigger than me belly this morning, love. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Fairclough. I hardly touch breakfast myself. You know, I don't think I could eat that lot if you paid me. You're not slimming, are you? No. Some of them slim nowadays as if they were training for pipe cleaners. I'm afraid I've not got that sort of figure. My body's more sort of... you know. Well, I've never conspired to be a proper Gordon Blue, but I bet I can do a better crust on a cheese and onion pie than that specimen I saw coming out of Len. What's the matter, Chuck? Think about what that fella Burroughs said, you know, at the top drum. What we heard him say. Stan, what he said could have meant anything. What you're doing is bending his words to fit the... Circumstances, yeah. Yeah, and your pie's getting cold after me making it. I can see to any pub like I saw to the Rovers. That's what he said. I can see to any pub... Well, you pub know what that sounds like to me. Sounds like somebody talking about trying to fit in another pub on his delivery yes, round. Yes, but any pub and like I saw, that's what's niggling me. I mean, you can make a definite statement about that, can't you? And I'm aware you're sloping after. You've not touched your dinner. Look, who do you think spies that gin, eh? I've said once. Well, I don't think it was Annie Walker. Stan, if you go accusing this fella at the top drum, you'll not be worth a bucket of muck by the time he's finished Look, doing it. Look, there's no harm in mentioning to somebody. Is that somebody? Huh? Oh, well, I've trotted this out once today already. No names, no packages. Look, it's Annie Walker's licence plus 30 years' reputation. Well, what's she ever done for us? What's that got to do with it? Listen, I'll say this once, and I won't say it again. Annie Walker is Jack's widow. And, and Jack would have expected us to give her the benefit of the doubt, huh? All right. All right. It's always the same. Kick off getting involved. End up getting in trouble. You like tights? Well, if ever anybody ever looked wrapped up in a nice warm chocolate, it's you two. Hey, have you taken the lucky lady on yet? Nearly enough. <laughs> well, if none of them fit the bill, Chuck, I'm foot loose and fancy free myself by the end of the week. Have we got the push? Well, look at the place. I mean, we only have one rush a day to cope with, and that's when you two dash in. <laughs> hey, I've got the answer to that daft question. What is the sound of one hand clapping? Saturday night at the Rovers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I should worry. I mean, I'm on a week's notice. Hey. I've heard on the QT that Mrs Walker has to go into court Monday next. 
Look, come on, Len. First things first, we've got to get this sorted out. Now then, Miss Gina Fletcher. Personality? Warm, cheerful. Radiant? Friendly. Hmm. Cooking. Now, she knocks up a very fast plate very of mash. Very fast. Very fast. Was it tasty? Under the circumstances. Oh, of having to work at short notice in a strange kitchen, you mean? Yes. yes. Show yes. the pipe, yes. Bertie, will you? Ah, oh, Mr Stanley, I presume. Hmm. I thought you and your missus were ensconced up at top drum these oh, days. Oh, I had a couple up there last night. All oh, right. Do you know who's local it is? Ah, uh, let me see now. Econ Inshaws, the old fellow who keeps the ferret. Squire Fitton, J.P. Schofield. That's about the lot, to my knowledge. Arthur Burroughs. You know him? I know his face. He's a drayman. Calls mm. in here. Ah, he's a kingpin up there, I'll tell you. Likes bragging. Bragging loud, like, uh, I can see to any pub like I saw to the Rovers. That's what he said. I can word see to any word. pub like I did to the Rovers. When did he say that? Last Are night? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? When, what time did he get in there? I don't know. What time did he get in last night? Oh, just after seven. How are you fixed for having a jar or two at the top drum tonight? is it? Oh, I'm Mrs Turpin. Uh, Betty. Oh, you work in the Rovers, don't you? Yeah, well, sort of, I suppose, at the stab. I, I was wondering, um, how does my table strike you? Ooh, right between the eyes, love. I mean, it's super colour, fragilist. Oh, I can't remember the rest. Uh, you don't think I've given them too much to go out, too much choice? Well, if you promise not to break me head, I mean, I don't like treading on tender bunions, Chuck. Uh, have I forgotten something? Is there well, something missing? Well, yes and no. Well, well, what I mean is, love, I mean, if I wanted to summon up guests by sort of twitching my nose or waving a wand, I'd have Grace Kelly sitting in that chair there, and I'd have Barbara Cartland sitting over there. It's not as grand as that, Mrs Turpin. It is for two plumbers, love. I mean, what they want at this time is a, a quick, thick butty so they can dash off out and have a long, slow pint. Well, Mr Fairclough and Mr Langton gave the impression that what they wanted was, well, gracious living. Oh, love, when fellas live by themselves, oh. gracious living is having a milk jug on the table instead of a bottle. <laughs> hey, that looks a bit of all right, Eileen. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. It looks like a posh advertisement for mustard, doesn't it? We've come up a bit, a bit of a problem here, though. We can only afford to pop in quick and out, you see. Yeah, if there's one comforting, never-failing fact about fellas, love, is they're always consistent. Well, they... No, well, you see, someone's cropped up. Yeah, it always crops up at the awkward times, doesn't it? Oh, they do, don't they? I suppose it's a quick dash in for a pint, is it? You know, the oh. stuff on that table takes a bit of making and preparing. I mean, all afternoon spent casting pearls before plumbers. We've got to go out, right? Yeah. See this wet, see this dry. Yeah, it wouldn't be to see a little fella about a bit of business, would it? All sort of on those lines. Yes, love, it is. Yes. Not only are they consistent, they're not even convincing. Well, you'd better get something to eat before you go out drinking. What's that? It's homemade meat and potato pie. Mm. Oh. Well, maybe we have got time for a quick bite or so before we flash off, eh? Well, it's not exactly uh, scientific, is it? I mean, reading tea leaves. It's not superstition. It's all science. Oh, give over. It's called tassiography, the science of reading tea leaves. Lucille Hewitt, University College London, reading tea leaves. Well, I mean, have you ever told somebody something that's come true? I warned Vera Travis only last year about evil forces gripping her husband. <sighs> Salt of the earth was said, Travis. And? Vanished clean off the face of the earth. Went out one night for a packet of ciggies and nobody never saw him again. Mind you, he had nicked all the cash from the Wakes Club. Oh, would you believe it? Well, I'll keep an open mind. No blooming tea leaves. Honest, these flipping tea bags are making me redundant. I tell you, decimalisation is only the tip of the window change. Nine tenths of it submerged. Tea bags. Yeah, and they're only a start. Any minute now, it'll be cocoa bags and coffee bags and dried up beer bags. Hey, do, do you know what's wrong with Val and Ken lately? Why, the poorly? No, it's just that they seem a bit, well, secretive, you know, whispering in that. No idea? No, not yet, I haven't. Are you sure they're like you say they are? Hmm. Perhaps it's time to do a bit of digging, then. Now you're doing it by the book. 
After dinner, sit a while. After supper, walk a mile. That's one of my granddad's hardy annuals. Ah, oh, well. Arrivederci. We went to the Adriatic coast last summer. It's in Italy. Oh, I see. Well, uh, you won't mind if we talk about the job tomorrow, will you, love? Because we've got to have a bit of time before we come to the right decision. Well, that's all right, Mr Fairclough. Que sera, sera. What will be, will be. Oh, yeah, sure thing, baby. And, uh, <coughs> bona sierra, eh? Means eyes down for a full forum. Ah, well. Bye. Bye. Hmm. It's odd, isn't it? Harry likes to use pigeon eye tie. And yet Gina's got the Italian name going for her. Mm, among other things. By the way, I had a bit of time in hand this afternoon, so I tidied up a wee bit, and I made the beds, and, well, there's a line of odd socks hanging up in the bathroom. I found them under the beds in places like that. <laughs> Ciao, baby. Ciao. Hey, do you prefer one to the other one, you know, Gina to Eileen? No, I don't think so. You know, our dilemma is this. One, they both want the job. And two, they're both very good at it. Right. Oh, the job. The job. Yeah, it's not a very easy decision to make. I mean, some things seem to tip the scales Gina's way, and other things tip the scales Eileen's way. What do you way. think of Eileen's spread? Oh, it's absolutely perfect. That pastry is as light as candy floss. Mm. No gourmet could ever knock Eileen's cooking, mate. No. Mind you, I reckon the gaffer down at our bank would. I suppose you do realise that this little lot has taken a, a great slice out of this week's budget. Don't think I'm in the dark about food bills and things, but Gina did put on a simple little fry up, didn't she? Well, it was a bit on the overdone side for me, uh -huh. but uh, I guess we could always tell her how we want our bacon and eggs done. Oh, that's what we didn't tell her to do this morning. Maybe she thinks we like it like that. Which still means that we've got to make a decision tonight. After we've seen Milado. Yeah, people have always laughed at him, you know. Oh, he used to make my kneecaps curl up when I was first married. Same when he were at school. Slow coach Stan. Stan the big fat snail. Yeah, well, he's not slow. Never has been slow. He just thinks a lot before he takes any action. And that's why he gets more things done than most folk. Oh, yeah. Annie Walker's got a lot to be grateful for. Oh, I reckon she's deeper in debt to Stan than anybody else she's ever known. Mm. Oh, and me. I mean, I'm the woman what stood beside him, encouraging him to follow the, uh, dictates of his conscience. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I knew all along, you know. Oh, yes, the minute he said, the minute he put that two and two together. Mm. Annie Rod, Stan and be pleased. Didn't like the beer at the top drum. Is he in yet? I can't see him, no. Hey, this place isn't that at all, is it? Used to be a right spitting sort of. Hey, you know, Harry, used, Harry Hewitt used to maintain that uh, if ever a stranger walked in here, the landlord used to ask him for his blood group. <laughs> Do you want a pint of bitter? Yeah, please. Two pints of bitter, love, please. Don't look now, but Burroughs has just walked in. <laughs> uh, sorry, pal, this space is reserved for the regular lads. Same every night from 7 o'clock on. Space reserved in a public saloon in a licensed premises? You've got your facts a bit cocked up, haven't you, mate? Oh, I don't know. Suppose it was your local. I walked in, sat down, where you always sit them in year in, year out like that. I'd have no grumble then, would I? So, uh, you'd say now, eh? Well, if he looked anything like me, I'd probably give him a duffing over. I'm sorry, mate, you're right. <laughs> you're all right, lad. Stay where you are. If there's any trouble, tell him Arthur said it's OK. <laughs> yeah, hang on a minute, lad. You can't drink that. I mean, that bitter hasn't dripped right. Do you need a prescription for that muck? What muck? That muck. Bernard! Bitter wants changing. <laughs> Here. Don't starve yourself. It's all right, lad. The barrels need a change, so I've got you two lights. Oh, it's very Just much, to give you strength up. Uh, Arthur. Arthur, you're a good lad. Come on, crash the ash, mate. Yeah. Oh, what do you think of this place, then? Oh, it's a sight better than the funeral parlour we get to. Ah. Where's that, then? Rose Return. <laughs> oh, you know it. Oh, Since aye, the landlord aye. died, I've never known a pub go down the nick like the Rover's return, you know. No, no flannel, Arthur. I'm not joking. It's <laughs> Mind true, you, I... you know, Jack, he were a gem. A real gem. Yeah. But his widow, she's not fit to run a, a dog meat shop. I'm not joking. <laughs> Nobody knows what a really stuck-up bitch she is, you know. Uh, Who goes in there now? Very few. And not only stuck-up, I mean, she's a snob. Uh, and worse than that, she's a malicious snob. 
<laughs> Mind you, of course, Newton and Ridley's. They should never have let us stop on after Jack died. Still, Rovers lost, top drums gain. I'll drink to that. Yeah, well, uh, it sometimes takes a week or two. Hey? The art of waiting. Uh, waiting for what, mate? Patience, lad, patience. My old mother used to say it always gets its reward. <laughs> We're not with you. Well, it's quite simple. I, I noticed Annie Walker. Mind you, it's that son of hers. He gets on my wick. <laughs> Still, it's her responsibility, and if the brewery's appointed someone who doesn't consider the customers, then it's time the customers did something about it. Oh, got someone to do it for them. Hey, that prosecution, what's it over? Uh, water dirty, you got it. <laughs> well, I wouldn't expect you to actually... Well, I don't know if it was you or not, Arthur, but if you were the mastermind behind that, well, I'd like to shake your hand. You see, son... As my old mother used to say, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> yeah, what's the matter with you? Like your mother used to say, where there's a will, there's a way. Oh, I never believed it, not for one single solitary second, not about Mrs. Walker. No, I said to Stan, we'll see hell freeze over, I said, before my friend Anne <coughs> succumbs. <coughs> well, you know what I mean. And now, with a frog in her throat and a fag in a gob, Coronation Street's coughing nightingale, your friend and mine will continue with her magic moments from the theatre. Oh, get right. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that on the blower, then? Handle. You know, Handle oh. Gartside. Oh, did you want a word with Minnie, love? That was the idea, but he said, don't disturb her. Oh. The lad's coming back tomorrow. Oh, every time I think of Albert and Handel, I think of that song. Two little boys had two little toys. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> now, have you got all that, Luke? As soon oh, as Burroughs yeah. signs his confession, the police drop all their charges against you. And what exactly will Burroughs be charged with? A malicious damage. Yeah. And you can't get any more malicious than watering down the gin and then tipping off the town hall, can you? No. Come on, darling, let's see that pair of sparkling eyes. I thank God for the privilege of living in a street like this and for having neighbours who would do for me what you two have done tonight. Oh, well, it's only selfishness, you know, love. I mean, a round of drinks cost an awful lot when it's on the house. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth, now that the slough of Despond has receded, do you think you could consider remaining with our happy little band behind the bar? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, don't look now, mate, but your little plan is falling apart at the scheme. Which one did I say came off best? Ah, uh, Gina, buy a short head. Buy a short what? <laughs> Hey, doll, can I give you a tip? You play your cards right, and you can have me. We haven't been out for nights. Well, whose fault that? Well, if it's me that wants to go out, and you that doesn't want to go out, whose fault can oh, it be? Oh, look, you go. I've got things to do. Oh, that's great, isn't it? Hello, Ken. Where's Val? She's got things to do. And that means night in, night out. Look, I'm not the Marco Polo type. If we were going to Colwyn Bay, it would take me days to pack up. Well, it's not the other end of the world we're going to, you know. Well, I don't know. I never thought about it well, when think. got up this job. Well, think. Think, love. It's important. It's our whole lives. Well, you're not going to convince Uncle Albert that Jamaica's not far away. And I don't care what you say, it is the other end of the world. <sighs> For a man in my position, it's a terrible dilemma. What? Interrupt the progress of knowledge or starve. Your geography lesson, love, it's cutting me off from my cornflakes. Oh, sorry. I've been yeah. staring at this thing for five minutes and I've got a horrible feeling that I'm nowhere near warm. Well, I've told you, find the north coast and then left hand down. Find the north coast? I can't even find Jamaica. There you are. There are, Jamaica and Montego Bay. Ah. It's right next door to Cuba. There's only a strip of water between. Yeah, you can wave to Fidel Castro on a clear day. But don't let that fool you, love. There's a lot of brass in Montego Bay. It's a sort of millionaire's Blackpool. Millionaire? Mm, imported ones. They leave London and New York with snow on their boots, and a few hours later, there they are, on the beach, sucking champagne ice lollies. Oh, I can just see us doing yeah. that. Yeah. December to April, that's the, that's the height of the summer there. Luxury hotels, golden sands, sunshine, and all personally discovered by Christopher Columbus. The luxury hotels? Uh, that came a bit later. I still can't understand it. Understand what? How Kenneth Barlow comes to get offered a job from Montego Bay. Then have another look at Dr Blanchard's letter. Oops, it's all there. Dear Mr Barlow, may I first say how much I enjoyed meeting you in New York, 
and how delighted I was to find a young British schoolmaster. Young, how about that then? A young British schoolmaster whose views were so much in sympathy with my own. Since we met, I have acquired a well-established private school, the Randall Hart School here in Montego Bay, Jamaica. And I should be honoured if you would join my staff as head of the Liberal Arts Department. Well, it's a very serious step to take, is that, love? I don't think I could advise you. I don't think anybody can. Well, I, I did hope that with all your experience... Oh, it's nothing to do with experience, love. It's the thing every woman must make her own decision about, just how far she's going to go. Perhaps Mr Hard would care to venture an opinion. No, thank you. I don't want to be incriminated as a dirty old man. <laughs> and you know what that means. Oh, dear. Princess Margaret had no lack of advice when she faced up to this same decision. Yeah, and you know what she did? She did ignore everybody and did her own thing, and that's precisely what you'll have to do. Yes, it seems as though I will. You know, Miss Nugent, a fly on the wall of this room, I think you were talking about marriage. Yeah. You go and get your middy love and pay no attention to him. I'll give you three cheers, even if peeping Tommy won't. Yes. Perhaps it is reassurance I'm really seeking. Thank you, Elsie. No, oh, don't mention it. I'll uh, send you the bill. By the way, um, how is our Annie taking to the fact that you're going midi? Well, I haven't really mentioned it. She has been rather distraught. She's not still distraught, is she? Oh, no, she's over it now. In fact, it's lovely to see her smile again after the horrors of the past fortnight. Mm. Okay. Anyway, I'd uh, better be on the way. I must have made you late to work. No, it's all right. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Say goodbye. Hello. Yes, she is. It's you. Hello? Yes, it is. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Painter. It's the boss. Yes, yes, I could. Yes, I will. Yes. See you at 10.30, then. Goodbye. Which boss? That is Mrs. Dawn Painter, bless her little heart. And who's she when she's at home? She's never at home. She's a Northwest Divisional Director of Charm Cosmetics. I see. What does she want? I don't know, but I will at 10.30, won't I? Perhaps she's going to give you a rise. Aye, and our Emily might get herself a see-through. Listen, you will ask her, won't you? Are you serious? Yes. Another three pounds a week and we'd be out of the red in 1972. You must be joking, three pounds a week. Have a look. Eh? Result of hard work and sobriety. Well, part sobriety. Have we really got this much stashed away? Oh, we're winning, kid. We really are winning, aren't we? Yes, we really are winning. <laughs> oh, hello, Mrs. Carver. You're looking well, considering. Considering what, Emma? Well, uh, you know, considering. Ah, uh, what can we get you, Mrs. Carver? Oh, well, nothing just at the minute, thanks very much. I've just brought my shopping list and my bag. Oh, I see. All right, uh, Oh, this won't break my arm, will it? I'll bring it round later on for you, Mrs. Carver. Oh, thank you, Emma. Um, yeah. Hello, Mrs. Carver. Hello, love. Morning, Maggie. Morning, Emma. Oh, go on, you just might convince me. Oh, you're a little ray of sunshine today, Val. Sunshine? Mm. Well, we could all do with a bit of that, couldn't we? Mm. <laughs> Can I have a packet of salt, please? <laughs> <laughs> what are you grinning at? Nothing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. It's that salt, you know, it has them in stitches. Mm. Bye. Do you want? Yeah. Oh, what was all that about? I don't know. It's a good job you didn't show them hilarious baked beans. Should have broke a rib. <laughs> and a piece of halibut and some apple pie and custard for afters. Oh, and don't forget to tell him that the addict's for me because I'm very particular. What you might call a connoisseur. Oh, you've got a mind of your own when it comes to mealtimes, Albert. Oh, I have that. <laughs> I used to ask Armistead if he fancied anything in particular, but he never seemed to fancy anything in particular, but he always enjoyed it when he got it. Oh, ah, yes. There's a lot of fellas take that attitude, but I always reckon it's the first sign that you're slipping to go oh, downhill. Oh, I don't think Armistead was... You see, a fella that isn't the master of his own stomach is master of note, and certainly not master of his own house. Oh, well, there you roll. I'm just off to get me pension, look. Uh, I'll be back in about uh, about half an hour. Oh, right you are, Albert. Ta-da. Ta-da. Oh, hello, Mr Tadlock. Is Mrs Corbett? Yes, she's right in there. Oh, thank you. Hello. Oh, hello, Miss Nugent. I'm just on my way into town, Mrs Caldwell, and I wondered whether you're ready to go yet, or is it a bit early? But I'm not going to town, Miss Nugent. Oh, I thought you were going to meet Mr Garside. Meet Mr Garside? At the bus station. 
Oh dear, quite clearly Billy forgot to deliver the message. Mr Garside's coming back from Whaley Bridge today and he wanted you to meet him at 11.30 if it's convenient. Oh, Miss Nugent, I've no idea. What a good thing you decided to call for me. Oh, can you come then? I, I thought you might have your shopping to do. Oh, no. Oh, there's Albert and his fresh addict. Oh, blow him. He's too fussy by halves, he is. Uh, I'll just go and get me other things. Oh, get a load of this after your breakfast. Well, what do you expect? Curlers? Curlers? Nobody wears curlers these days. Ma'am, I'm talking about you. <laughs> I have a date with the boss. Oh, not on the carpet, I hope. I should hope not, love. It's a woman. Oh, <laughs> I see what you mean. <laughs> well, you're acting very brave, Elsie, but you're not fooling me. I know you've got a nasty little caterpillar wriggling round in your stomach, haven't you? You mean that some of the smoking can't kill. <laughs> Nevertheless, love, I'll take 20 off your hands. Right. Yeah. There we are. Ah, thanks a lot. Well, go on then. Wish me luck. Oh, I'm sorry. Good luck. Good, Good luck, Elsie. Oh, and if I'm not back in three hours, send your Bobby after me, will you? <laughs> oh, it's just a joke, Mrs. Calder. Oh. Hey, did you forget something? No, no. I just want to put another, a few extra things on my list. Oh, oh, here it is. Oh, thank you. Only oh, you see, we're having company, so we want some extra bits. <sighs> oh, I hope you've got some of that tin syrup sponge. Anvil's very fond of that. <laughs> You know, she's got more men in the house than we've had hot dinners. <laughs> <laughs> Would you come in, please, Mrs. Howard? Thank you. Sit down, Mrs. Howard. I'd like to take a special interest in the work of our newer area managers. In particular, I go through their monthly returns very carefully indeed. I've just been going through your returns for December. Oh, there's nothing wrong with them, I hope, Mrs. Painter. Overall, they're very good. However, there is just one thing that I find rather disturbing. I take it you maintain regular contact with your agents. Yes, I do. I make it a point of seeing each one of them once a week at least. Of course. Then you'll be able to tell me why one agent sold practically nothing during the whole month. Oh, you mean Mrs. Mrs. Sid Sidlow? Mrs. Mavis Sidlow. Those are her figures. Not encouraging, are they? Well, yes, Mrs. Hyde. Well, there is an explanation, I presume. Was she ill? I'm afraid I don't know. You don't know? I called at the house four times. There was no reply. Even her neighbours don't know where she is. She went away for a whole month and didn't tell you? No, she didn't tell me. Then I suggest you take urgent steps to locate Mrs. Sidlow and have a few very sharp words with her. If every agent disappeared into the blue whenever she felt like it, there'd be no cash in the bank to meet my salary. Or yours, for that matter. Yes, I do realise that. Good. Then I leave you to take care of Mrs. Sidlow. You've made an excellent start, Mrs. Hyde. Thank you. See that your agents don't let you down. I'll do that, Mrs. Painter. Good morning. Good morning. Coffee? How did you guess? Anybody home? What the heck are you doing with that lot? I'm packing them, so don't say I never do now for you. No, we didn't do somebody else for me at all. You can put them all back again. I never ordered that stuff. I know, but Mrs Caldwell did. Oh, I expect she's not had a chance to tell you. You're having company. No, what company? You know, Angle Garside. Angle Garside? Oh, don't start getting at me, Mr Tadlock. I mean, Mrs Caldwell went to meet him off the half past eleven bus. Oh, she did, did she? Well, if she thinks she's bringing him back here, she's got another thing coming. You're quite right, Albert. It's your house. Of course it's my house. And as long as I've got any puff, I'm not having a conchy in it. Least of all, Andal Garside, so for the last time, take that stuff away. Oh, you're a devil when you're roused, aren't you? Minnie Colwell knows damn well I won't entertain that fella. She's only trying it on. If you ask me, Mr Tatlock, she's doing more than trying it on. Yeah, well, nobody is asking you. What do you mean? <clears throat> well, it's not often that Mrs Caldwell digs her heels in, is it? But when she does, you might as well try and shift the Piccadilly Plaza. Oh, I talk English. Look, if you won't let Angle Garside come and have his dinner here, he's got to go and have it somewhere else, hasn't he? And Mrs Caldwell will have it with him, and a tea. Oh, you're talking daft. 
Yeah, but then again, I always do, don't I? Yeah, you know, even if she does, it doesn't make any difference to me. I've managed on my own for years. I, I carry on that road. Poverty, superstition, sunflies and snobbery, unless you're prosperous and white. Now what are you on about? Reasons for not going. You haven't second thought? No, 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 I'm still on the first thought, the pros along with the cons. We still haven't decided yet, remember? Ah, oh, this morning it was all blue skies and champagne vice lollies. Yes, yes, but could we enjoy them if we knew that just round the corner there were kids living off a jam butty and a banana? I mean, it's not all sunshine in Jamaica, you know? Nowhere ever is. No, no. What are you afraid of? Feeling guilty? No, it might just affect my attitude to the job, you know, the kids I teach. I think it's only fair to think about it now. Yes, I suppose so. I've been feeling guilty too, or I would if we went. It's been worrying me all day. That's why I bought that record as a sort of antidote. Oh, yeah? Well, what's your hang-up, then? Oh, the people we leave behind. Who, exactly? Well, who do you think? I mean, really, it's crazy, isn't it? Why should we, you, feel responsible? I mean, it's not as if you were even his daughter. Me only his niece, for Pete's sake. Well, you're not even that close, but you feel responsible. Me? You're responsible for Uncle Albert? You just said. Just then, you said, why should we feel responsible? Yeah, I guess I suppose you're right. I do, really. Oh, hello, uh, oh. Uncle Albert. Oh, hello, love. You didn't sound like that. I'm not after out. Only, I'm not used to sitting in front of fire when I've got someone on my mind. I've, I've got to tell somebody a bust. That Minnie Colwell, she's invited Andrew Gasser. What's up with you, lot? <laughs> Nothing's up. Well, from the look on your face, anyone would think it was you was having the conch to come and sit at your dinner table. No, we were just talking about you. Oh, that's what I shouldn't hear. Something that you should hear. And something that you are the first to hear. But we don't want it putting around, not just yet, anyway. Oh, well, what is the big secret? Well, Ken's been offered a job. A very good job. Oh, aye. Abroad. Abroad? Where? Jamaica. And are you going to take it? I don't know yet. That's what we were talking about. You, if we go. Hey, you've got no need fret about me. Uncle Albert. I can look after myself. Yes, but Uncle Albert, there's something we want you to think about, just what? in case we should decide to go. What? Well, we want you to... Think about going to live with Beatty. That's Ooh. why we're telling you about this now. Time for that yet. Not to my dotage, thank God. Seem to remember telling somebody this morning. I've, I've lived on my own for years and I, I reckon I can manage to carry on. I'm getting over it slowly. Only, I must say, I do get a bit jumpy from time to time. Oh, I heard all about it, of course. It was all over the papers. That poor young man. He must have been deranged to go and shoot himself like that. But it was you I was thinking about, Minnie. Oh, well, I hope you haven't been worrying about me, Amber, because there's no need to, really. Anyway, I'm not going to leave you again. I'm going to get digged somewhere around here and keep an eye on you. Oh, well, that'll be lovely. Now, come and sit down and have a rest, Handel, and I'll get the dinner ready, because uh, Albert will be back soon. Oh, dear. I wonder what he's going to say when he finds me here. Well, whatever he says, he's got me to contend with. One out, both out. Oh, hello. I hope you don't mind, Albert, but... Hey, what does it matter whether I mind or not? I seem to be not round here. I'd better get used to the fact. Now, Albert, I hope you're not going to start sulking. What the heck's sulking? Because if you are, 
Andal and I can soon go and have our dinner at Ina's. What? And leave me to eat through this lot on my own? No, no, you've bought it. We, we might as well have it. A land fit for heroes to live in. It looks as if you'll be able to stay. By gummy, must like your cooking. <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely lovely. It was delicious. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the, it's the element of competition, you see. It keeps him up to the mark. Yes, he said I had to tell you. He made the souffle. Ah, oh, Ken. Clever lad. <laughs> Have you ever noticed how these souffle merchants always leave the bread and butter stuff to their wives? Yeah. I'll tell you what, you'll have to come round and have a meal at our place soon. Only don't expect any contribution from him, unless you'd like a nuts and bolts curry. <laughs> That's something to get your teeth into, anyway. Yeah. Oh, Ken, why don't you tell them your news? Our news, love. You tell them. Well, apart from Uncle Albert, you're the first to know. Ken's been offered a marvellous new job in Jamaica. Really? Congratulations. Jamaica? When did this happen? Well, I met this chap in New York, a Dr Blanchard, and he's opening this new progressive school for, wait for it, young gentlefolk, and it's in Montego Bay. Montego Bay? I've read about that. I think you have. It's a millionaire's playground. Yeah, that's right, and uh, I'd be head of the liberal arts department. Yes, get that. Mm -hmm. What about the money? Oh, well, a lot better than anything I get here, of course, and the fringe benefits. Oh, boy. Big rent-free bungalow, free place for the kids, you know, not to mention cheap servants and free sunshine. Hey. <laughs> What would you do if it happened to us? I don't think I'd agonise about it too much. You long. know, that's just what I have been doing. Both of us have. What for, you daft ape? Oh, he's got some kind of conscience about betraying his origins. Well, when you've lived all your life in a place like this, you know, to suddenly become a member of a privileged minority takes a bit of getting used to. But you wouldn't let that kind of scruple stop you going, would you? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question yet, but uh, I've got a funny feeling the answer will be no. <laughs> what you're worried about. I mean, all those years teaching at Bessie Street and the tech, you've deserved this break. And I mean, you've always known that you'd do better if you moved. Uh, well, why don't you tell the truth and shame the devil? Really, it isn't up to you two. As a matter of fact, you're both past it, aren't you? I, I watch it. I know what she means. We might be past it, but them two upstairs aren't. Every mother thinks that way, doesn't she? Oh, Andal, I was beginning to get worried about you. I expected you back an hour ago. Now, come and sit down and have a warm. No luck, Minnie. Oh, well, never mind. You're bound to find somewhere soon. I'll ask her the district. There isn't anything. And with them having taken all the houses down, I don't suppose there's many people could take a lodger in. And in the corporation flats, they're not allowed to. No, poor Andal. I'll have another do tomorrow, but I don't think I've got much hope. Well, if I don't find anything then, well... I suppose we'll have to go back to Whaley Bridge, for the time being, at any rate. Oh, it. don't worry. Something will turn up. Yeah. Oh, wish it would get a move on, then. Well, of course, we could go back to my house. Only, not just yet, because it'll be cold and, and damp, and I'd have to have fires going in all the rooms, mm. and I, I don't feel equal to the move yet. But uh, there is somewhere else where you might be able to go. Oh? Come on, shape yourself. I'm expecting a visitor. Shape myself? Who's the visitor? Mrs. Sidlow. Who's Mrs. Sidlow? My vanishing agent. I had a telephone call from her this morning. Mm. Oh, I understand you've been looking for me, Mrs. Tanner. Uh, when's she arriving? I don't know, but she's got a bit of explaining to do when she does arrive. I don't know who's going to like it least, me or her. Hey, can you imagine me, the heavy-handed boss? Yes. Here's your opportunity. Mrs. Sidlow, yes. come in, please. Would you go straight through? Oh, well, thank you. Oh, hello, Mrs. Sidlow. Glad to see you back amongst us again. Oh, Mrs. Howard, I can't tell you how sorry I am for going away like I did. Yes, I was a little bit sorry myself. Oh, why, why don't you sit down and tell me what happened? Thanks. I, um, I haven't been feeling too good recently, you see. Then I get this call saying that my mother's ill. She's a widow, you know, and lives on her own in Liverpool. Well, just outside, actually. Go on. Well, I, I, I had to go and look after her. But it ended up with her looking after me. You mean you've been ill? Well, I, I think I've had a sort of breakdown. I just sat and cried. Well, I'm very sorry to hear it, Mrs Sidlow, but why couldn't you let me know? Couldn't you get your mother to phone or a neighbour? I should have thought about letting you know. 
But somehow, I just couldn't think about anything. Well, if you had have let me know, perhaps I could put somebody in your place. As it was, I didn't know whenever you were going to go back selling. And if the one thing the customer doesn't like, it's two people turning up on the same day. Is the business very run down, then? Well, it's not in the best of health, love. It needs to go and a lot of hard work to get it back to where it was. So I suggest you get stuck in as fast as you can. Well, I don't really feel well enough yet. If I could just wait for a week or two, you know, start again slowly, a couple of houses at a time. I'm afraid that's no use at all, Mrs Sidlow. What we need is a sustained attack on your district right now to make good the ground we've lost. Oh, I see. Do you need the job? Yeah. Badly? Very badly. All right. I'll do the best I can for you. Though I feel I ought to warn you about the worst. It is quite possible that head office may say they want somebody to replace you. Oh, do your best, Mrs Howard. Well, I've said I would, haven't I? Oh, thanks. Bye. I can't let Andal go back to Derbyshire at this time of night. And I certainly can't let him go to the Corporation Doss House. Well, he's been in worse places, in prison. Oh, well, then I'll just have to go back to my house and put him up there. Unless, Albert, you was to let him stay here in your spare room. Oh, so that's the idea, is it? First I feed him and now I've got to give him shelter. Oh, Albert, you will, won't you? If only you could forget the war just for once. It's such a long time ago. Ah, here we are. I hope you like yours with salt and vinegar on, Albert. Minnie says you've got nowhere to stay. Uh, you can have back room upstairs. Well, that's very good of you, Albert. That's really very good. You've taken a load off my mind and off Minnie's too. Well, now I'm going to say I'd better take my case upstairs if I can find it. Oh, don't worry, Andrew. It's up there already. Well, I... Now, you go and get the knives and forks and, and you can go and get the bread out. Another cup? No, thanks. Well, come on, let's be having it. You didn't come around here to tell me you'd run out of tea. No. The story I told you this afternoon, it wasn't true. I see. Well, at least it wasn't the whole truth. I didn't tell you the whole truth. But now you want to? Yes. I have been in Liverpool with my mother and I have been ill, but... Yes? I didn't go for the reason I told you. I went because my husband's left me. When did this happen? About six weeks ago. I'm sorry. Someone else? Is that the reason for your breakdown? That's right. Oh, I am sorry. Why didn't you tell me? I was frightened. Frightened? Frightened of me? Well, yeah, me boss, I'd let you down. After I'd gone, I realised I was foolish not to tell you everything. I knew you'd help me if I did. You will, won't you? I'll do the best I can, love. It's not just me, you see. It's the three kids. Men. They get you in some right messes, don't they? You don't have to tell me that, love. Women can be a bit funny and all. Never mind. You leave Mrs Painter to me. Of course I know what playmate time it is, but you're not going out of this house without a drink of tea inside. All right, I just don't want Billy Walker going down my throat for being late, that's yes, all. Yes, well, pride won't fill your belly until lunchtime, will it? Neither will humble pie. Oh, would you credit me the one morning? I've got to be on the dot, and look, we'll get up late. don't get flustered. If you played right today, you could do yourself a favour. Oh, I'm doing Mavis a Sidlow a favour. There's nothing in it for me. Well, if I thought that was true, I wouldn't let you do it. Oh, you are a cynic, aren't you? Yes, I am. Oh, I don't know. Look, Elsie, it's the first opportunity you've had to solve a problem since you've been promoted. Now, if you play your cards right, when promotion comes along, you're going to be set up. Am I right or wrong? Oh, I don't know. Well, you don't know. Look, love, they're selling cosmetics. They're not running a door-to-door -door problems page. All right? All right. You better get off. You've got a buster face as well. Billy Walker. Eat people like that for breakfast. Yeah, that might be all you get. Good luck. Oh, look who it is, isn't Anthony Quinn and Ailey Mills. Hey, Where's your steel band? Hey, hey. now, hold on a bit, Emma. When are you off, then? Oh, oh, look here. Oh, it sounds marvellous, Jamaica. 
What wouldn't I give to be going with you? And me, especially this weather. Well, I don't know. You all seem to be very keen to get rid of us, but nobody has said we're going yet. We certainly haven't. Oh, well, there was a woman coming from Inkerman Street. She said that you'd been gone a week already. She yeah, should know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if one could keep one's private affairs private just for once? Some yeah. old round here. I don't suppose it's any different even in Jamaica. Congratulations, oh, anyway. Oh, thank you. Oh, I must say, the Caribbean's always been a thing with me. Overtones of James Bond and all that. James Bond? I thought he was Scottish. No, no, that's Sean Connery. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ian Fleming, you know, used to set a lot of it in the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. Doctor No and Thunderbolt. Ah, and... so that's what we find under your pillow, sexy spy boots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid not. You'd find a rather thick at nighty right now. <laughs> and you won't be needing one of those in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm just saying it's a coincidence. What's a coincidence? Well, you'll be in so hospitable all of a sudden. That's not a coincidence. A coincidence is two things. This is only one thing happening. No, it's not. Not when Val's most likely moving to Jamaica, it's not. Yeah, well, maybe she is and maybe she isn't. It's just an idea. And you're all it's got load to do with me. It's just a coincidence. Well, there you are. That's what you're saying. But, Minute, that's what you're saying. Yes, well, there you are. Oh, right. Now look what you've got undone. You've gotten it in all my toast. Well, there's plenty if you're quick enough. That's it. That's done. I've had enough. Come on, Andrew. I know when we're not wanted. Thank you very much, Albert, for having us. But I don't think three people can get on in these houses. Oh, wait, will you stop it? Well, come and sit down and stop creating. Well, I thought I heard you say you'd had enough. Well, breakfast. I mean, I've had enough breakfast. Oh, well, very well, then. Yeah, and I, I like having you. I want you to stop. Do you? Of course I do. Oh, well, uh, that's all right, then. Oh. Um, it was just a misunderstanding. That's it. Uh, could you force a piece of toast? <laughs> no, that's more like it. You know, there's one thing I appreciate about being retired. It's being able to have your breakfast at your leisure, like. Oh. I'm sorry, Albert. What? You've run out of bread. Oh, like. Mrs. Howard's right, Mrs. Painter. Oh, send her in, will you, Janet? Would you come in, Mrs. Howard, please? I'm sorry I'm late, Mrs. Painter. The traffic on Market Street, I, I had to get off and walk. That's quite all right, Mrs. Howard. These things happen. I hope I haven't wasted too much of your time. No. I can always find uses for my own time. And I never blame other people if I waste it. Do sit down. Um, could I, um... Yes, Mrs. Payton. Would you take Mrs. Howard's coat? Yes. Yeah. Sit down, Mrs. Howard. Now then, I must be very brief, I'm afraid. Upstairs have called a sales committee meeting in half an hour, and among the areas they'll want to know about is yours. Now then. I want to be able to tell them that this little patch of downhill figures here is about to swing right up again, and I'm sure that you do too. Did you see Mrs. Sidlow? Yes, I did. Well? Well, it seems she's had a bit of trouble. Her husband's gone off and left her. Well, she's got her problems. But that's what she said to you. Fine. Now, what I really want to know is what you said to her. What I said... Well, what could I say? I, I said we'd do the best we could. Oh, marital problems are not really our business, you know, Mrs. Howard. What about her returns? Well, that's why. It, it does explain it. Mrs. Howard, explanations are not necessarily remedies, you know. Very often they're merely excuses. Now, we all of us make excuses. If you'll forgive my saying so, the traffic in Market Street this morning was probably just the same as any other morning. Well, I just... I... I'm not getting at you, but you do see my point. Now... Did you make it clear to Mrs. Sidlow? Yes, I did. I told her exactly what you would have done. I said it was in her own best interest to get the round back up to scratch again as soon as possible. Good. You pointed out that her keeping the agency does depend on that. Yes. She... She will need a bit of time to pull herself together, you know. Time? Well, that's one of the things that head office doesn't supply me with. You know. Yes? All right. Yes, I've gotten here. Oh, straight away. Now, Mrs. Howard, I want you to see Mrs. Sidlow again, and I want you to make it absolutely plain this time. She's got two weeks. If things are not back to normal, and preferably a little better, she's out. I can't uh, deal with the rest of this now. It'll come back this afternoon. I'm uh, far from finished, Mrs. Painter. I'm sorry, I do have the appointment, you know. Janet, will you fetch Mrs. Howard's coat? This afternoon? 
afternoon. You might have told me. I just have. Sooner. Will he be staying for tea? I don't know, but uh, I shall ask him, so you better get something in just in case, eh? Oh, and I must warn you that he can go on a bit, come Brian. I mean, if you think I've got the gift of the gab. So make sure he doesn't sink too much sherry, right? Well, I hope it's going to be worth it. How long was he there? Uh, three years. Hello, hello there, man. How are you doing there, Uncle Albert? Hello, love. And, uh, did he like it? Hear it from him. From who? Um, Jack from Tech, who was in Jamaica for a while. Well, and he doesn't reckon much to it, then. <laughs> Quite the contrary. Oh. Um, well, I didn't do you any, because I thought with, uh, you, uh... Oh. Well, with Minnie to see to you. Uh, you've got her nicely installed. Yes, but I don't like being dependent on other folk, not family. Mm, you'll have to learn to compromise a bit, Uncle Albert. Oh, does that mean, then, that you're set on going? Not quite, so stop looking like we've thrown you to the walls, will you? The walls? Anyway, the Wildlife Preservation Society said that we couldn't throw you to the walls, so it'll just have to be Bobby, I'm afraid. Oh, very comical. Oh, Ken, don't be flippant. He's bound to be concerned. Well, anyway, we've not made up our minds yet. Oh. Because for myself, I'd advise you to go. Would you? Well, at your age, I mean, you don't like seeing the world, and, and you would benefit from it, uh, if there were only yourselves. Which there is. Well, I was thinking about the twins. The twins? Well, great place for them to grow up, Jamaica. Yeah, as far as it goes. Hey. Well, uh, I mean, they're English. <laughs> we like to think so, yeah. Yeah, well, and you want them to grow up English. Well, Uncle Albert, they will grow up English. They'll just have a very healthy suntan, that's no, all. Oh, no, no, you don't see what I mean. Being English doesn't mean just being yeah, born. Yeah, all right, Uncle Albert, all right, I take your point, and I'll give it very serious thought. Oh, well, all right, so, so long as you don't think that... Uh, I'm only thinking about myself. I, oh, I'll be all right. You'll be laughing, Uncle Albert. You just keep Minnie buttered up and you'll have no trouble at all. Have you done with them? Um, yes, you can have them if you want. No, oh, thank you. I'll be seeing you. Well, they are, Mrs. Sidlow. As far as charm is concerned, you've got two weeks. That's what she said. Uh-huh. Oh, don't think I don't sympathise, but she has got a point, you know. I suppose you really do need the money. Yeah, of course you do. Daft question. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll do two things for you. First of all, I'll give you some advice. And I know from experience it's good advice. Thing is, stop feeling sorry for yourself and get off your backside. That's the first thing. Second thing, I'll see Mrs. Painter for you. I have an idea I can swing it. Can you? Yes, I think so, love. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Howard. Oh, that's all right. Do what I can. Well, now, I think you best be off, love. Right. Dinner ready? Oh, I'm sorry. We're we talking business? Oh, it's all right, love. We're just finished now. Oh. Well, I'll wait to hear them, will I? Well, give us a ring tonight. Better still, if you feel like it, call round. Right. Well, I'll do that, then. Bye. 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 You know, it's daft. She thinks of me as her boss. Well, what's daft about that? Yes, technically, I suppose. No, love. Either you are or you aren't. And if you are, it's about time you started behaving as if you were. And remember what I said about favours? Don't give any away, and don't make any promises. Hello, Mrs. Hard. You've uh, seen to Mrs. Sidlow? Yes, I've seen to her. So we can move on at last? Yes, yes, we can go straight ahead. Cases like this do take up a disproportionate amount of time, don't they? Yes, I suppose they must. Now then, <clears throat> those are the analysed returns from your agents for the last couple of months. Uh, it's our new system, you see. We've included a set of average figures from the whole country, so you can see. Half of them. Sorry. The blue line is you. Oh, that's me, is it? Oh, well, it looks all right to me. We're not doing so badly, are we? Well, you weren't. You are down badly, just at the end there. Oh, yes. Well, of course, you can't expect to flog a lot of stuff just after Christmas. Which is precisely why we should all make a very special effort, don't you think? Even the Mrs. Sidlows of this world. Have you ever tried selling this stuff to women who are up to here in bath cubes and talcum powder? It, till it's coming out of their ears, nearly. I have. I was rather good. Oh, well, if 
You like twisting their arms. I don't. Mrs. Howard, if your heart's not in it, you're absolutely free to leave the business. I didn't say that. No. Now, you've got another problem, lady, here. Mrs. Doreen Lindsay. She's new, and I think it might be the best thing to keep a close eye on her for a while. How close is close? Well, that's up to you. You might almost go out on her round with her next week. You might be able to guide her a little. Well, I don't know if I can. I, I promise I might do something like that for Mrs. Sidlow, and I can't do them both. Mrs. Sidlow? <laughs> I honestly thought we'd finished with Mrs. Sidlow. Well, we have. It's just that I thought I might go with her to get a roundup again. It's the same sort of thing as you suggested for Mrs. Mrs. Watson. Mrs. Lindsay. Now, look. Mavis Sidlow is experienced enough to operate quite adequately without supervision. Mrs. Lindsay, on the other hand, may very well benefit from it. If you go out with Mrs. Sidlow, you'll be nothing more than a watchdog. We can't afford watchdogs. Well, I thought just to get her back on her feet again, you know. I, I thought I might flog it myself. No, I'm sorry, that's even worse. You're paid to organise the area. Now, look. You see that she starts selling on her own or dismiss her. It's as simple as that. Do you have to pressurise her like this? You don't like it. I can't say that I do. And just before, you were accusing me of pressure selling, twisting people's arms. You didn't approve of that either. No. Mrs. Howard, I've taken the trouble to read your file. You used to work for Miami Modes, hmm? Yes, I did. Miami Modes. That shop and others like it just about invented pressure selling. Miami Mode should have a plaque up to commemorate it. Is it pressure selling or is it downright dishonesty to sell a size 12 dress to a size 14 customer? Or did you never do that? Did you never make discreet little adjustments to the back of a frock? Oh, but it suits Madame down to the ground, when all the time it suits Madame like a three-day beard. All of which has nothing to do with Mavis Sidlow. No, it isn't. As far as I'm concerned, she's caused quite enough trouble. She's fired. Oh. Well, I hope you're going to tell her yourself. You don't expect me to do your dirty work. I do expect you to. You're her immediate superior. Well, in that case, you know what you can do. Well, you leave me absolutely no choice. Consider yourself sacked, Mrs. Howard. Oh, God, is there no end to it? Mind you, Pete. Well, why should we go through this performance just because somebody's coming? I mean, the pace is always a bit of a mess. Why don't we just admit it? It'd be a darn sight worse mess if I didn't do this, and I know it'd be the first to complain. And in case you hadn't noticed, I do clean it up every day, you know, not just when your friends are coming. If we went to Jamaica, we could have a housekeeper. But I'm not sure that my scruples would let me. Oh, blow your scruples. I think Brian had a housekeeper. Well, then. Uh, this is Brian. Brian Val. How do you do? Oh, right, sit down. Let me get you something to drink. There must be something left over from Christmas. Yes, thanks. It's nice to meet you at last, Mrs. Barlow. Oh, Val, please. Uh, Val, uh, where's the sherry, love? The sherry? Yes, love, the sherry. I, uh, I put it under the sink. <laughs> you put it under the... <laughs> you must have heard of me. Well, I deliver my standard lecture on Jamaica, do uh, I? Wait till you've had a drink. Oh, that sounds awful, as if we've only invited you around to, you know... Well, we have, haven't we, Brian? Oh, you made it quite plain. Come and do your Jamaica lecture, Brian, he said, but don't stay too long. How uh, long were you there? Three years. Mm. And why did you come back, or did you not intend staying? Oh, quite the reverse. No, my wife fell ill. We had to come back. Oh, what a pity. Jamaica's just, well, bananas to me, I suppose. <laughs> And I know the sunshine. Well, you'd have to go a long way to beat the climate. It stays about 80, 80 odd. All the time? Mm. It's cooler if you go up into the mountains. Oh, no, we're going to a bay. Um, where was it, Ken? Montego Bay. Montego Bay. Is that where you were? Oh, no, you're joking. No, we were in Kingston. Montego Bay's uh, around the other end. But we went round there once. And what's that like? You mean you'd never heard of it? No. It has to be one of the most beautiful places in the world. The trouble is the millionaires have just taken it over. It's, uh, it's all swanker tales and Dolce Vita, enormous American cars all over the place. 
and fat men sitting in cane chairs, drinking their cafe cognac and looking out over the bay as if they own it, which just happens to be true. Gosh, it sounds fantastic. Well, Montego Bay isn't all of Jamaica. Wait till I tell you, you've got another drop of this Are you tent. sure? Yeah, you go ahead, have sir. What a pity your wife couldn't come round, I'd like to... Yes, it is a pity. She, uh, died, you see. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, but she loved it out there. She, she thought it was really marvellous. And if it wasn't for the kids, I'd go back like a shot. The kids? Do you not think it's a good place for kids? For kids? Great place. But three kids are a handful on your own, and I need Margaret's mother. She's, well, she's one in a million, my mother-in-law. But as I was saying, Jamaica, the real Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I've never known people like them. Are you sure you want me to start? Right away, yes, you go ahead now. Well, you know that what we call Jamaicans were originally slaves from Africa brought over by the Spaniards after Columbus discovered it. The original inhabitants were Arawaks. In fact, the name Jamaica is an Arawak word, meaning Isle of Streams. No, thank you. Not tipped, Mrs. Clegg. Oh. I happen to prefer plain, and today I feel like indulging a preference. Mm, getting reckless, isn't it? Ooh, throwing his money about like a man with no arms. What is it? Had a stroke of luck? I don't believe in luck anymore. It's sheer hard oh. work. Well, Ken was in here this morning. Should ask him about luck. Job in Jamaica. And I've heard all about it. If I was in his shoes, I'd jump at it. But I think Elsie Tanner and I are getting a little long on the tooth to think about emigrating. Hey, how is she, by the way? I haven't seen her all day. Oh, well, she's fine. She's finding out how the other side lives. Hey? Eh? She's joined the administrative set ever since they made a district, whatever it is, with oh. the farm. Oh, she's doing all right, though, isn't she? She's doing all right. <laughs> See you later. OK. But this morning you said I had two weeks. Well, you haven't got two weeks now, love. You've got the boot. But what about what you said? Oh, for crying out loud, didn't you hear me? You mean if you hadn't gone back, it'd have been all right? If I hadn't tried so hard. Anyway, you're lucky. You haven't got a husband to face. <laughs> wow. Well, look, love, I'm not your boss anymore, so there isn't anything else I can do for you. So I'd best be off if I were you. I don't know what I'm going to do now. <laughs> it's a good job I've got Lionel. Right. You're lucky. My son's a long way away. <laughs> He's not my son, is me? You know. Your boyfriend? You could call him that. Oh. And how long's this been going on? Well, you know. No, I don't know. You come round here, you give me a heartbreaking story that your husband's left here, a real tearjerker. Now, how long has Uncle Lionel been on the scene? <laughs> well, I had to tell you that, didn't I? Well, I thought I might lose my job. I had to. Your husband did leave you, didn't he? You didn't leave him by any chance. Oh, no, he left me all right. When? A while ago, really. You are? A while ago. About a year. Well, I had to try. It was my only chance. I had to tell you. It was me job. Mrs. Sidlow, if you ever want to see Uncle Lylan again, you better shift. Oh, well, I mean, you're all right, aren't you? Before you I disfigure you, before I wrap this round your neck, Mrs. Sidlow. Well, what would you have done? I mean well? it. Well done, Elsie. Oh, Ken, decide. <laughs> oh, Ken, decide. He did say that the Hurricanes missed Jamaica, didn't he? Oh, he said that most of them do, but every so often, well, you know, high winds in Jamaica. What's that? There's a book made into a film with Anthony Quinn and Hayley Mills. Oh, that's what Irma was going on about. Yeah, new trick. No, I've been trying to fathom it out all day. Well, you aren't a bit like Anthony Quinn. Oh, I don't know. I didn't shave for a couple of days. Look, we're ah. doing this again, getting nowhere. It's all about pirates, actually, high wind in Jamaica. You know, I think I'm going to feel a bit of a pirate, except in the sort of money he's got a guy. Yes, there is that when all's said and done. Oh, Ken, decide. Right. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. If it comes down heads, we go. Tails, we go anywhere. How's that then? So we've made the decision. We're going. Definite. Now, don't you undermine me. We're going. We're going. My God. We are. <laughs> We're going. Hello, love. Oh, I, I 
didn't expect you so soon. I thought you were working out overtime every night this week. I've got a telephone calling from Mr. Vine, the accountant, you know? I haven't got any tea ready or anything. That's all right, love. I don't mind waiting. Different tone for Mr. Vine this evening, oh. eh? We're really getting out from under. Alan, as I didn't manage to get out to the shops, um, would something from the chippy do you? Oh, again? Well, I, I think I've got a can of ravioli or something. Look, no. We'll go out later and get some and give ourselves a modest pat on the back. Well, no, I'll open that tin now. You need some now, Alan. Alan. Yeah. You, you know I went to see Mrs. Painter this afternoon. I thought you went this morning. Yes, I know. She asked me to go back this afternoon. That's why you missed the shops. Anyway, what happened? Well, I... That's him, excuse me. Hi, oh, Peter Vine. He's always punctual. Hello, Alan Howard here. Hello, Peter. Yes, I'm fine, thanks. Thanks for sending the statement. Makes rather better reading, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, you wet blanket. You wouldn't believe it if it was true, would you? No. No, I'm not planning to do anything rash. As a matter of fact, I think I can give you another hundred. No, I'm... Hang on. No, no. Get the bank book out of my jacket pocket, will you know? Yes, I know. It's all right. It's all in the bank book. Yeah, so these days it makes my favorite reading. Oh, she's fine, thanks. Matter of fact, if it wasn't for some of her contributions, we wouldn't be in Alan, this. Alan, you can't give him another hundred pounds. There'll be no more contributions from me. I got the sack today. Peter, can I call you back in a few moments? Yes, I'm sorry. You got the sack? Yes, after all, you said to me this morning, I go and talk myself out of a job. Oh, and Mrs. Blasted Sidlow. Well, that's it, isn't it? That's it. Oh, go on and slap me around the face as summit. Why bother? I don't know why I bother at all. Who cares? Look, it's scrapped up all right. Lovely. Right, are we ready, Sagittarius? Well, I'm only just inside it, really. Uh, for the younger ones among you, <clears throat> indications are that you will be reaping happiness from a friendship with a member of the opposite sex. Oh, that's nice. Hey, they are clever, aren't they, the stars? Oh, it's on the right track, is it? Yeah, I think it is. Well, well, well. Mr Fairclough, did you hear that? You get your nose out of the trough, mate. I'm cleaning up for the lady. Oh, no, I'd rather you didn't, Mr. Fairclough. Oh, it's no trouble, though. No, it's not that. Only yesterday when you were clearing up, you threw away the bacon fat. Well, I'm saving it for the birds. I throw it to them on the yard and they all come down. They flock to me. I'll bet they do. Anyway, I was thinking of asking you if you could spare them a weeny bit of bread. Oh, help yourself, anything. Oh, thank you. Perhaps you could bring the coal in. It's more a man's work, isn't it? Your wish is my command. Anyway, I must earn my keep. Ah, well, now, you don't want to over drink it. I mean, fair's fair. <clears throat> you slaving here all morning, come dinner time, you need a rest, you know? Oh, you are considerate, Mr Langton. Ray. You both are. <clears throat> Do you, uh, you fancy a drink at dinner time down at the Rovers? Oh, yes, very nice. You both are. Ah, well, I can't really speak for fair enough, you know, uh, responsibilities. Oh, yes, I can imagine. <clears throat> well, he's more experienced. Uh, well, he... No, no, I mean, you're more free and easy. I can tell that by your face. You've got a very open face. Devil may care. Yes. See ya. Has he gone? Yes. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Oh, right, you'll have to wash your hands. Oh, you've got very strong-looking hands. That must come of working with them. I suppose the same applies to you, doesn't it? All work and no play. So if you're finished round about 12 o'clock, how about the Rover's return, eh? You're very much alike, aren't you, you and Mr Langton? I suppose that comes of working together, being partners, making decisions. It makes you think in the same way. We have had our disagreements, you know. Yeah, well, the past is the past, isn't it? Yeah. The Rovers, then. <laughs> yeah, it's only a step. Right. Well, I got that worked out. 1100 hours, the mobile X ray van arrives in Stanley Street. Handel gets here at a quarter past and saves us a place in the queue. But that 
don't want my chest x-rayed. But it costs you no. And it pays to be careful, Minnie. So we're agreed, eh? Right. Now then, I'm just going down to call the shop to get some lozenges. Why, well, have you got a sore throat? No, I want to get my tubes clear. Oh, don't offer to get the groceries, will you? Minnie, are you not happy under Albert's roof? Well, it's like being in the army. Regimented, I agree. Well, we know the answer to that. But let's be practical, Minnie. You're paying out rent on a house that's standing empty and growing cold and dank. Yes, it will be. But a fire or two would put that right. Oh, no, I'd still feel cold. I'd get the shivers there. I know I would. Oh, you'd soon forget. Yes, but it's just... I don't like living there anymore on my own. And besides, it's fashionable now. What is? Well, having lots of different people all in the same house. Mm. Well, will you allow me to go over there and put a fire or two in against the damp? Well, yes, I think perhaps Bobby would enjoy 40 winks by his own fire. Grand. Let's have the key, then. Only, I can't go and leave Mr Tatlock now, you know. Not with the Barlows going off. Thank you. Well, well you know I can't. The writing doesn't improve. Don't be rude about my mother. What's that say, then? There. Yeah. Moon, blue moon. Oh. Oh. Well, she's got a point. We're... Going to the other side of the world. How often do we go up there and see her now? Well, I know, but... They exactly love we don't. Now, look, with up to two months paid leave and no home here, that's where we'll go. We'll stay there more than we do now. Oh, we must see her before we go, Ken. We really must. Well... I want mm. to. All right, I'll tell you what, love. I'm seeing the big white chief today, all right? Now, as soon as he tells me when I can be released, then we'll start juggling plans. Taking my mother into account? Of course. Come to think of it, she writes just like you. Yes, she does. See ya. Hello. Hello, love. He says the chaos hasn't started yet, so can I fill you a bit of time? It's all right for him. He's just going round being dynamic. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know where to start. <laughs> Give me noticing, I suppose. Uh, funny you should mention that. The salon? That little word, notice. It just entered my young life on it. They did the giving. Yes, I heard. What did Alan say? Well, Alan's saying don't go much together. He just ripped up his bank book and marched out. Didn't he come back? I suppose he must have done, because I found him in bed this morning. Still not saying, of course. So I gave him a poke in the ribs. He pulled a sheet over his head, then marched out without his breakfast. So that's it. Well, you don't sound very put out. I think I understand it. He wants those debts paid back at any price, more than I do. Of course, I'll pull my weight out of the... Oh! Mustn't forget the doctors, you know, inoculations. Oh, so will go mad. She screamed the place down last time. Did she? I'm sorry, what were you saying? I can't even remember what I came. Because you've got nothing to do, that's why. Oh, I see, is that it? I thought it must be summer. Mm, I wish I hadn't. Funny, isn't it, fate? Oh, it isn't fate. We decided. Don't you kid yourself. Ken, getting that offer, that's fate. And when it comes, you've got to grab it with both hands. That's what I do. Mind you, with mixed results, but then that's fate, isn't it? You're saying that we're right to go and not to doubt. Yes. Yes, I am. Come in. Well, though, and what are you doing here? Well, I saw the smoke, thought I'd come and welcome her back. No, they're just thee and me. Would she were back, but she's not. And I'm not aware of any ghosts. Oh, is that it? Why she won't come back? I think so. Oh, that's daft. I mean, well, I understand it, but it's unnecessary. Oh, I agree. I thought if I got this place pick and span, cosy and bottomed out like, I might be able to persuade her to return. Well, if you can't, Mr. Garside, no one can. Well, that's very nice of you. But I feel a bit awkward. Well, I feel it needs, needs a woman's touch in the decorations. Are you trying to get around me? Well, I heard some tales about how you went about do-gooding. I didn't do all houses out. You can take on who you like, anybody, as long as they keep mum. Um, <clears throat> are you not hitting it off, your menage a trois? Oh, as a threesome, we get on very well. But I never did much care for threes. Well, that's not unusual, is it? All right, you're on. Get lost! Get lost! What did you say? 
Going in for a drink after a hard morning's work. Good. You fancy one? I don't see why not. I can sit and save me gin and tonic while you explain yourself. Hey, just a minute. Look, I think I've done enough for one day. I'm trying to explain about a about a torn bank put to some poor faced clerk. Why didn't you tell him the truth? That you had a row with your wife and you felt like tearing her up and instead oh, you just. Oh, come on. Well, didn't you? I felt like tearing the whole place up. Is that why you walked out? Yes. Well, thank you for respecting the furniture. I'm trying to respect myself. I don't think anybody else can. I owe so much money. Alan, I respect you. Debt or no debt. Do you? Yes, I do. Could be a long road, you know. Well, there are other jobs. I'll go and get one. What do you think I was going to do? Sit on my backside all day? No, I'm sorry. After all you've done. You forgive me? Anyway, they gave me a new bank book. Oh, well, that's it. You're away, aren't you? How did you get in? Miracle of science, feet. You're supposed to be doing that system job. Client wasn't there. Pity. Did you knock? Hello, Mr. Fairclough. I hope you didn't rush on my account. Rush? No, no. Only oh, yarp aspiring rather a lot. I wouldn't want you to catch a chill. It's rather dangerous in this cold weather. Will you look after me, love, and uh, mop my fevered brow? She's got better things to do. Yes, you've, that's very true, Mr. Langton. Yes, love. You see, I left the oven on. I'd better go and see what I can rescue. We don't want the house going up in smoke. Let it burn. Oh, you don't mean that, Mr. Fairclough. God, your technique, mate. What's the matter with it? You turn half, lay it on. She does abuse her implements. Mrs. Ogden's pan and brush rather looks like it's been trampled on by large mammals. Hey, what's upstairs looking like? Oh, most inviting. Most. Lucille, I know young people have their own peculiar and modern views on this sort of thing, but with Mrs. Sharples being away, our moral watchdog, so to speak, and Mrs. Caldwell being implicated... In what? Well, it does seem a sort of love nest we're helping to set up. Of course, matrimony might ensue. Miss Nugent, what are you going on about? The proprieties, I suppose. Mr. Garside does have a light in his eye. Yes, he does. Great. Good luck to them. Mm. It is rather a curious phrase, living over the brush. Its derivation interests me. Hi. <laughs> My. You have got it looking well. Look. I, I brought a present for Minnie. Oh. I reckon a cat should go a treat on that. Yeah. I, I chose it so it won't crash. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, yeah, uh, when you bring her in there, uh, do you want us to make ourselves scarce? Well, if you don't mind, in case she gets upset. I think that's it then. Oh, Miss Nugent, before you go, I'm very grateful for what you've both done. But there's just one other thing I'd like to ask. Well, when Mrs. Colwell returns, uh, I intend to ask her a question uh, about me being a lodger. Uh, in your point of view, would that be uh, immoral or likely to give offence in any way? Well, uh... It would. It would. No, Mr. Garside. No. Well, us two have been x-rayed, but of course he would be missing. So we shan't get to know about him. Oh, I don't think there's anything wrong with Andrew's chest. He doesn't cough much. No, of course he doesn't. He weren't in trenches up to his chin in mud. You don't think any better of him, then? Well, you know, companionship isn't agreeing all the time. It's argument as well. Do you know, I argue with our Valerie. Are you saying, then, that you're glad of him? Well, things were looking pretty black at time, you know, and... And beggars can't be choosers. And he wrote, I'm glad to have the pearl of you. <laughs> I think I'll keep my coat. It's 
very warm in there, you know. No, no, I think I'll keep it on. Oh. Do you like it? Oh, you've made it like a palace. Well, to be honest, I had some help. Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, it's my house, Andal. It's not your place to offer me a seat. <laughs> Do you feel any collywobbles, anything of that sort? Well, it uh, looks different. Well, that's a relief. Uh, have you noticed the rug? It's a housewarming present. Oh, I don't like you giving me presents, Andal. Why not? Well, I can't afford to give them back. Minnie, there's only one present I want from you, and that's for you to come home. And I'd like it to be my home, too. I'd like you to accept me as your paying guest. Well, I know that living here, it might come back to you. You'd dwell on it, and I'd be a distraction for you. Now, you're reminding me of Joe. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have mentioned it. Well, I know I'm very silly. Ina says it's silly. Only I, I get upset, and I'm very irritating, too. Mm. You've found me trying on occasion. Yes, I have. Well, then we're quits. Shall I pack my bags? Uh, and go to Whaley Bridge? No, no, no. I mean, and bring them here. Well, I think if you were a gentleman, you'd bring mine as well. You say it was all too much for you? Sorry? All this cooking you have to do. Oh, no. Mr Fairclough shouldn't be long. He's been arriving very promptly for his meals. I expect that's working in the open air. It gives him an appetite. They're both very good about the food. Not the least bit fussy. I'm rather glad about that, really, because... I'm not the world's greatest cook. What is your forte, then, would you say? Well, I do like this. Better than the other jobs I've done. I've worked in canteens before, dishing up, and factories, you know. But it didn't do very well. I've had a lot of trouble with machines. Really? I suppose you've got a very good job. Not at the moment, Chuck. I'm what you might call one of the nation's unemployed. Oh! Well, I suppose I'm just fortunate. Um, would you excuse me a minute, please? I, uh, I have to pay a call. Certainly. They do play havoc, don't they? These are stoves. They do a bit. in a day in bed. What are you doing here? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but your housekeeper has gone to, gone to the doings to prepare herself for your return. Oh, I see. Oh, feeling better now, are you? Well, you know. Yes, marvellous, isn't it? It must be me. I think it's you that makes me feel better, yeah? Yeah, and as soon as she returns, you'll have a relapse. Alan says thank you for the loan. Elsie, what... Get her to Dosha by the looks of the lunch. She'll finish you off. Hello, Ray. What was all that about? Would you believe it? She thinks I'm coming the old soldier to wangle the day off. Hello. I'm ready now to dish up. As if I'd be so childish. Your technique. I suppose you don't agree with Walters. Oh, I have no strong feelings either way. Oh, well, this is for washing up. I've got you down to start with breakfast. I'll do dinner and then Minnie will do tea things. Then we alternate. Any road, I'll pin it up. Uh, Albert, I... Hey, I, I've got a shirt to go in there. I suppose you never thought to ask. No, Albert, I, I'm not going to the wash. Albert, uh, Mrs. Caldwell's going home. Since when? Well, since I decided this afternoon. Did you know about this? Yes, I did. And you sat there and let me make a road out for three of us. Well, well, you can rub it out. But it's done in clay and I'll, I'll have to start all over again. Well, I must go. Well, what for? You'd not be back all the time to have a look at him. No, Mrs. Cole, I won't need to do that, Albert. I shall be there. Uh, Andrew's my lodger and he's taking up residence from this evening on. I'm sorry. He has every right. Minnie. You run along, love. I'll bring you back later. I'm sorry, Albert, but it is my house. You must see that, Albert. Don't Albert me. I'd rather there's no unpleasantness. Well, of course there is, because you're acting on me. You're leaving me in lurch like you did before, in 1914. I didn't know you then. No, well, blokes like me. Decent God-fearing folk. You turned your back on them and left them to perish. Can't we talk about now? No, but there's no difference. It's just the same. Is it, Eck? We'll only be two doors away. I know, and door will be shut, same as every other door in this street. Except our Valerie's, and she'll be gone. 
You'll always be welcome with us. There is such a thing as pride, you know. Albert, you are very hospitable to both of us. But I say, I'd be glad if you'd let us return it. Thank you. Now, don't forget, Ken. Anything at all I can do? Advice or something? Yeah, I'll bear it in mind. <laughs> oh, Ken, the car. Oh, yes. Would you tell Billy I'll be in touch? Certainly, dear. Good. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Mrs. Lockett. Hello, dear. It's such a shame, because I don't know how to sell the whole thing. Ah, notice on the floor. Flat. Oh, dear. Now that we're in port, now that we're going... Oh, goodness, we've never got that much to do. Mm-hmm. Will you write mine out on a separate list? Val, I've just had a thought. If we could find a suitable port in Scotland and sail from that... We could see my mother! Exactly, that's the idea. Yeah. But do you want to go by boat? I am trying to facilitate a decision. I don't know what that means. That means I investigate ships as opposed to planes. There's that song. Trains and boats and planes. Yeah. Oh, leave me alone. We've all got our troubles, you know, Albert. No, no, it's all right for you. How much are you paying her? Ten quid a week, I wouldn't wonder. It's not all roses, you know, living with our Gina. Well, but she's housekeeping for you, isn't she? Oh, yes, yeah, she's doing that, yeah. yeah. Money buys everything, doesn't it? It's those pensioners that are left to stew. There's always meals on wheels, Albert. You've got me pride, you know. Sorry, mate, I shouldn't have said that. I'll just forget I said it, eh? He's sulking because his housekeeper won't go out with him. And he's been trying ever so hard. No, that is just the point. I have not. I've been playing it nice and cool, unlike some I could name. Me and Mr Fairclough just turned him down and all. He was in here moaning about it before Mr Tatlock buttoned his ear. I think I feel better. <laughs> hey, Lucille. What? How do you fancy a night out? I'm not standing in for her. You'll have to amuse yourself. Here with a pint, Betty, will you? Excuse me, Chuck. Yeah. How do? Matt Lennon. He's consoling Daddy Tatlock. He's been abandoned, you see. We've all been abandoned. Ah, she says I'm abandoned, Ariel the Dust. Ah, <laughs> no. different thing. I don't understand what she's talking about half the time, no. no. Oh, I think it's a shame. Poor Mr Tatler. Why don't you look after him? Well, I've got my Cyril. Oh. Not much in it for her, you know. I mean, she get no thanks. Depends what's under bed. Anyway. Well, you do hear these tales, you know. Old folks leaving pots of gold to them as see them through the twilight oh, years. Oh, them is rich, aren't they? Who knows? Oh, yeah. Albert Tatler. Oh, why not? Well, he's always skint. Under the bed. Never. Stan, why is he so cut up? Val's emigrating, Minnie with her bow, he's got this loot, who's he going to leave it to? Well, it's his daughter. They won't live with her, will he? They don't get on together, do they? There you are. He's never mentioned loot to me. Would you, mate? Fear of being robbed. Garside, he, he made his pile out in Canada. Of course, some, some of us couldn't leave this country. We couldn't desert it. We couldn't bring ourselves to. Have you got an out, Albert? Have you saved nothing up at all? Well, I, I banked everything on my collection, on my coins. And when I found out they were worthless, I, I'd given up ever wanting to be rich. I, I reckoned on my pension and my relations and friends. I, I reckoned I'd be all right with them. Oh, thank you. Why don't you get yourself some new slippers? I'm very fond of these. I can feel the warmth through the hole. But only when you're sitting by the fire. I am. I'm very nice. It is, too. You don't get chilblains, then? Oh, no, no. I've never suffered from that complaint. Oh, I do, ever since I was a little girl. And Albert gets them on his feet. Poor Albert. I don't think you need to be upset about him. He'll be all right. Oh, you know, that X-ray van, it's coming round again next week. And it's no trouble. You don't have to get undressed. Well, would you like me to go over there? Oh, well, I don't want to boss you, Andrew. I should think not. Only, on the other hand, you bossed me today. And, well, I'm glad. 
Uh, finish with that. What are you doing with that? Looking for jobs. It's out of date, I love. I know, but it gave me a rough idea, won't Fair it? Club, are you hungry? I fancy a shopper's again myself. Have you had no supper, you lads? Of course they haven't. Their housekeeper can't cook. <laughs> Our housekeeper's got compensation. She's rather nice, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, that'd be good. I'll tell you something. She's taking you for a ride, and you two, like the mugs you are, walking slap bang into it. It's a question of morale, love. She's doing great stuff for ours. Is she? Well, she is for mine. Please do be careful of the floor. I told you we should have stayed in that ship. It was you, you know. Anybody fancy wine vinegar? <laughs> More unknown, you know. Scruffy old fellas having money. Jackie Smethick lived on Orphanage Street. One bottle of milk a fortnight. Mm, he died a wealthy man. I invested it 30 years ago. It came out. When it grew, lad. Oh, I grew all right. He didn't let on, though, did he? One bottle of milk a flipping fortnight. Did he uh, know about it, Lauren? <sighs> Who knows? It finished up going to a cat's home. He must have had more milk than that if he were fond of cats. You haven't got the point, have you? Tatlock over there. Just look at him, Stan. Shoulders bowed with worry. Ah, oh, it makes you think. Dragging his feet along. Nobody in the world. Nobody in the world. Makes you think, does that? <sighs> Another shock, is it? Electricity bill? <laughs> no worse than usual, dear. Bills like memories are always with us. Actually, I was thinking of Mallorca. I prefer Jamaica. Hey? Three different parts of the globe. Yes, well, imagination can span galaxies, Lucille. Mm, mine only goes as far as fellas. You know, there's Val and Ken off to Jamaica. Do you remember when your Uncle Jack and I were ready to get to Mallorca? Oh, I wonder. Things would have turned out different if you'd gone. Hey, uh, you know what I'd like for my dinner? No, love, what? Broth. Hello, hello. Good morning, Mrs. Walker. My goodness, we're punctual, aren't we? I thought you and Mr. Ogden had taken to hibernating these winter mornings. Now, there's no need for sarcasm, Mrs. Walker, just because me and my stand need more sleep than most. Any road, I'm not punctual, nor as regards my job here. Oh? No, I thought I'd look in on Mr. Tatlock first. Mr. Tatlock? Mm. Why? Well, because he's an old gentleman. And it behoves the young to look after the old, you know, cos we'll all be old one day, as you yourself know, Mrs. Walker. So, uh, I'll see you later then, eh? I mean, it's not as though anything's spoiling here, is it? What hour is the matter, Minnie? It looks as if you're casting a spell. Oh, so I'm an old witch now, am I? No, you know what I mean. Standing there, looking here, there and everywhere. Well, I just want to make absolutely sure that it still feels like home. Mm, and does it? Yes. I think it would if it was burnt to a shell. All my life's been spent between Jubilee Terrace and here. Yes, I suppose so. Well, there's no need to sound so sad about it. I'm not. Yes, but I think it's a pity that you haven't seen more of the world Travel like I have. Well, I, I never really wanted to travel, Andal, especially since things have started to go so fast. You're a very gentle person, aren't you, Mary? Oh, not when I'm roused, I'm not. I reckon I'm a match for Ina when I'm roused. <laughs> that reminds me, I'm very angry this morning with you. Who promised to wake me so I could get the breakfast ready? Oh, well, you sounded so sound asleep, I thought I wouldn't bother. What do you mean, sounded? Well, you were snoring. I don't snore, Minnie. Oh, well, then you was just breathing heavy. Oh, and what were you doing listening outside my bedroom door? Well, it, it was nice feeling that I'd got company at that hour in the morning. You mean a snore's better than nothing, eh? Mm. I'm sorry to bother you, Mrs. Cop. Oh, Mr. Gart, sad. Uh, do you happen to know where Mr. Tatlock gets to in the morning? Well, he's knocked off his morning paper, and so he tries to be first down at the library reading room now. He never has liked reading a newspaper after anyone else. No, well, shouldn't be long before he's back then. Sorry to have uh, disturbed you, I'm sure. <clears throat> oh, now she'll surely tell Ina that you were in your dressing gown. Well, you weren't in yours, were you? No, well, what if I were? Well, it's your house. Yes, it is. <laughs> but Haina's still at Lytham St. Anne's. <laughs>
Bayek. I'd rather look at her than a gas oven. I'd rather look at her than a free pint, mate. Does it always take you two this long to get ready for work? Well, we haven't got much on today. You what? We... Oh, that's right. We've not, have we? Yeah, we could even take the day off. That's a good idea. Do a few little jobs around the house. Yes, I could put some new oil cloth down in the kitchen. And I could tile round the bath. We haven't got any tiles. We've no oil cloth. Look, you two, how am I going to get my work done if you're going to be under my feet all day? You can't, love. He's off to the yard. Oh, oh, I've suddenly developed these terrible pains in the soles of my feet. I'll have to rest and be ministered to, I should think. Out, the pair of you. I'm paid to be housekeeper, not a nurse. That's easily remedied. Your wages are trebled. Out. Oh, all them good looks in the heart of Flint. Come on, Leonard. I'm coming. So come. See you at dinner time, Chuck. Uh, not before uh, one o'clock. That's the time dinner will be ready. Anything special you fancy? Oh, don't bother about me, love. Just uh, an old gold flake packet between two dog biscuits would do me. You don't even have to bother with the dog biscuits for me, love. What is for dinner? A lamb chops, I thought. Great. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and you're not borrowing, out? <clears throat> of course not, Mr Tatlock. Now, do I ever? Well, not from me, you don't. Because I don't ever lend out to nobody. No, has, um, has that always been your policy then, Mr Tatlock? Ever since I lent ten bob to a chap that got a job at Canal. Oh, I know that one. It was Suez Canal, weren't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, well, of course, I've always been a big believer in thrift myself, Mr Tatlock. Thrift? Mm. Who's talking about thrift? You can't be thrifty on a pension. Yeah, well, I suppose it's a bit difficult, but uh, not exactly impossible, eh? What do you want? Nothing. I'm just being neighbourly. But you live at the other end of the street. Oh, but neighbourliness isn't just a matter of bricks and mortar, Mr Tatler. Isn't it? Oh, no. No, it's here. It's caring for your fellow men. Oh, I see. And you want to care for me? Yeah, I do. Why? Well, because, because it's, uh, it's right to care. Especially for them amongst us who, because of advancing years, aren't up to uh, caring for themselves. Oh, no disrespect meant, mind. Right. Get started. Eh? Get started curing. Yeah, well, I'm straining at the leash, <coughs> Mr Tatlock. Yeah, well, first of all, I'd like a cup of tea. Right. No sooner <coughs> said than done. Where do you keep your tea? In cupboard. In a cocoa tin on bottom shelf. Oh, yeah, I've got it. Hey, is there anything else you might me to be doing? You know, sort of clearing up and that? <laughs> Mr Tatlock? Aye. You can start upstairs. Oh, yeah, in all bedrooms. Oh, and stairs won't do in as well. Right, I'll see to them. And come to think of it, front parlour hasn't seen a duster for weeks. And backyard's like a mid-in. Oh, and all them drawers in there, they can do with tidying out. Are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still here, Mr Tatlock. <laughs> I'd given you two up. Ah, oh, well, you know what fellas get like in their forties. They sat there lecturing at our new housekeeper all day and I hadn't <laughs> thrown a coat over his head and dragged him into the street. She's raised desires in me that I thought were dead long since. Has she? Mm. Well, you're not here to desire me, just to make sure that cold tap stops making a noise like a fog. <sighs> just have to restrain myself, then, won't I? Hello, Kenneth. Morning, sir. Ken, mm. you're supposed to be clearing that drawer out, love, not expecting every item in it. <laughs> oh, oh, do you remember that one? Oh, I don't think I want to. That's that time you got tiddly at land, didn't you, and then tried to walk into the sea with all your clothes on. I remember? did no such thing. And there, that was the time you are trying to look fashionable with those new high heels on. Oh, well, it's very fashionable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think I've improved since then? I see. Well. Oh, how do you mean improve? Got better looking, more attractive. Uh, no. No, neither do I. I thought you were supposed to be seeing your dad today. Yeah, just as soon as I've tidied this lot up, though. Oh, you ask me, we're not going to be ready to catch a boat from outside the door, let alone well, Greenwich. Your idea to spend the last few days with your parents. It would have been better to get them to come down and spend the last few days with us. Uh, isn't it time for a wet bath? You've only just arrived. Oh, I don't see, though, what that's got to do with anything. Honestly, you men, you're no good to anybody, are you? Morning, miss. Hey, Val. 
I look very dashing in this one. Is that why I was wearing that, uh, that herringbone sports coat with the long lapels, you know? Oh, that's a good-looking young fellow, isn't I? Do you know what my ideal job is? What? A headmistress. Adored by all my children, but capable of great firmness. Well, all the headmistresses I never knew were capable of great firmness. I've got the marks to prove it. They were a big influence on my generation. But they've mostly all passed on now. Like so much that was good and fine. Here, yeah, love, it's just a well-paid job I want, not missionary work or out like that. So if you don't mind... I'm sorry, I'm just rambling. About time, too. Mrs Walker, just about going to spare. Where have you been all morning? Minding my own business. Hope you've got a better excuse for her. I want a drink. I'll give her half a mile, Betty. A port, large. Dinner time, middle of the week. Oh, don't get in a flap. I'll pay for it. Been robbing your say, though. Well, uh, what's he got? How much? I'll tell you what he's got, Chuck. What? A flaming dirty house. And I've just cleaned it all through. Yeah, but it's in a good cause. A fellow well was telling me that this farmer died recently and they found 5,000 quid in an horse's collar. Yeah, well, Albert Tatlock's not a farmer. No, but he's had time to save it, but he hasn't had the energy to spend it. Well, he certainly doesn't spend it. Do you know, he's still using a packet of force. Eh? Look, he'll have quid stacked away. Who will? Huh? I don't know which is the biggest, your gob or your lug holes. I shall pour that port all over your head in a minute and set fire to it. Well, she's certainly not going to drink it. Not if she wants to keep her employment here. Oh, I was just on my way through, Mrs Walker, honest. The proof of the pudding is in the morning cleaning and dusting, Mrs Ogden. Yes, Mrs Walker. <coughs> what about this port? Eh? Oh, well, waste not, want not, eh? Administrative ability, attractive appearance, and personality essential. It must be at least an executive position, probably with a conglomerate. Eh? Oh, oh well, we'll find out, shall we? Betty? Yeah. Can I use your phone, Chuck? Help yourself, Tom. Oh, good morning. Uh, Harrison Platt? Oh, uh, about your advertisement in the paper this morning. I... Oh, yes, oh, yes, I will. Thank you. Oh, good morning. Uh, my name's Howard. Mrs. Howard. I'm inquiring about the advertisement. Well, I haven't exactly got warts on the end of my nose. Well, you could say that, yes, I suppose. I have been told... Look, what is this job all about? Oh, I see. Yes, yes, I could, I think. Yes? About half an hour. Yes, all right, I'll be there. Bye. It's not an executive position, then. No, love, it's demonstrating their new spud peeler in the ironmonger department. If I don't get a move on, I'll be late for my appointment. See you. Good luck. Oh, hello. Oh, so this is what you're up to when you say you're too busy to come home for lunch. I was simply showing this young lady where to get the bus for old. First door on the right, Chuck. Where are you going? See you later. Why do women have to do everything at the gallop? Well, perhaps it's because if we didn't, we'd never get through. Two bottles of stout, please, to take out. Right, I love it. Hey, that's not Faircroft's be bevy, love, or Langton's. Pardon? They're beer drinkers, love. Well, isn't stout beer? Five bob, Chuck. Uh, thanks. Stop. Cheerio. Cheerio. Hello. Nice girl, isn't she? She's very attractive. Mm. Thank Betty, please. Okay, look. I wonder. What? If our Hilda let her do for me and all, eh? <laughs> I think we've really dropped on our feet this time. They're all right, Ellen and Ray. Bit frisky, you know, like old fellas, but nothing I can't handle. I think we're really going to like it here. Just like being married, isn't it? <laughs> Better, chicken. Better. And where do you think you're going? I thought you was having far too wings, Mr Tatlock. Oh, I were. In my own house. 
where I don't expect to be waking up with somebody tramping through. No, well, I brought you some from Rovers. Wow, well, what a, is it? A steak pie. Thought you might like it warmed up for mm. your dinner. I can guarantee it's fresh because I saw it delivered myself, and that doesn't happen every day in spite of what Annie Walker says. Right, well, go and get it warmed up then. Yeah, I'm going to do. Yeah, well, hurry up. I'm a bit peckish. <laughs> Thanks, chicken. Did you have a good night? Aye, not bad. I picked a couple of mix up in Piccadilly one o'clock this morning. You'd have laughed. I only took them to Victoria, so clock's still showing 15 new pence. You know this decimal lark. Well, how much is that? Three bob. But these characters thought it were 15 bob. <laughs> You're getting half a lap, boy, oh, says one of them, and slaps eight bob in my hand and ops it. <laughs> what do these two daisies do for a living? Oh, some sort of odd job men, I think. Can't pay all that much. Oh, I don't know. They don't seem short of lolly. Well, they don't skip the housekeeping anyway. I always did like good grub. Oh, my dad's been swatting up this decimal lark. He has the cab parked off the day on Deansgate whilst he explains it to old dollies in fur coats. By heck, he has it easy. I think I'll shove him on nights and I'll take over day shift. Charlie. Huh? I know it's all right. You come in here, I mean. But wouldn't it be better if we got our own place? Of course it would, chicken, and we will have. Well, it wouldn't matter then if my mother didn't like you. She couldn't stop us being together in her own house. True. And you could sleep all day then, instead of having to catnap wherever I'm working. I've noticed you've been looking a bit pale lately. Night workers need more sleep than day workers. I read that somewhere. Talking about kipping, is it safe? When they've gone back after dinner. It's got everything, this place, everything. It's 100% improvement on that bakehouse job you had. You haven't answered my question. Question? Why don't we get our own place? Well, because we can't afford chicken, not yet. Few months steady grafting with taxi and who knows. We could even get married. Aye, we could. Oh, I'll get you down the aisle one of these days, Charlie Braddock. A lot have tried. Yeah. Well, they didn't all have my determination. Hey! You'd better scram, they'll be coming back for the dinners any minute. All right, I'll have an hour in that pub down the street. Yeah, well, you watch out for them, you know what they look like. Hey, cheeky, but way. Oh, why? They want me to go to Liverpool for training, because it means travelling every day. Sounds fine. That's one thing that's missing in my life, you know. A woman to support me. Hey, you thinking of going somewhere? Oh, I thought you'd gone, mate. Honest, I did. I have gone with you. Ah, oh, has Miss World got their din-dins ready, then? You're only jealous. How do? How do you do? A stout, please. Yeah. Don't get any warmer, does it? Warm enough in here. What with all that commission, I'll be on a nice fat wage. Be like ours, you know. You'll be on your feet all day. Well, we need the money, don't we? We need the money. Well, I'm still on my head all day for that much money. Has anybody ever told you you've got guts? Yes, me. Hmm. Have you got your rifle, Hilda? Eh? I said, have you got your rifle, Hilda? You can get arrested in China for doing that in public, you know. Oh. Uh, did Albert enjoy his pie, then? Do you know, I think if the world was to break into little pieces, one of them pieces would be you stood up against this bar. Someone's got to think about how to spend Albert Cockless money. Now then, did he mention it? Such as? But where it was, in shares or anything like that, in the bank. I just wish he'd mentioned the cost of the pie and the tin of pears he had for his afters. Look, we've got to get you in that will somehow, and it shouldn't be difficult with the bar always toddling off. Oh, there's still his daughter. We'll be closest to him. I will, won't I? Hilda Ogden. His sole benefactory. Yeah. Uh, listen, did you get that port that you wanted, love? Oh, no, I didn't, did I, love? Well, uh, when you do, get me a pint, will you? Excuse me. Excuse me. I reckon if I got a good wind behind me, I'd blow away. It was a bit expensive. Chops are. Hey, do you want some more lolly? Well, I could do with it. <sighs> if you need any more, love, don't be afraid to ask. Yeah, I don't know the cost of living. Ah, oh, you're very generous. What have we done to deserve that? Well, I did help an old dear over a pedestrian crossing the other day. And I let a spider go that I found in the bath. Pays to be nice to folk. Aye. Hey, how much have we got on today? We've got a choice, actually. What of? Taking Des Hartley's fireplace out, or catching up with some accounts in a nice warm office. It does you good some days, you know, to let an occasional day slip by. It does. Gina! We'll be at the yard if you want us, Chuck. Right. Come on, they've gone. Oh, 
Oh. Oh. Did you put a bottle in? You want jam on it. All the time. Cheeky. You sure they're all right? Not too decrepit? Mm. Oh, don't worry. The Salvation Army will find someone who needs them. Don't fret. I tell you what always fascinates me. Crowds of people around the second-hand clothes stall on the market. In this day and age. I could never wear somebody else's cast-offs. Yeah, well, you've never needed to, have you? No, touch wood. <sighs> anyway, and you won't be needing too many clothes where you're going, either. Oh, I don't sound so envious. You make me feel guilty. I am envious. You? You could go anywhere. Young, no ties. No, I couldn't. Why? I don't know. Every bit of get-up and go I seem to have had seems to have, well, disappeared. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'd never be going to Jamaica if it wasn't for Ken. I mean, he's the spur. So the answer is find an husband. Yes, it would seem to be. Yeah, well, that's harder than going to Jamaica. Have you seen the sort of husband material that's oh. floating around these days? <laughs> what a shame. Anyway, I'd uh, best be off. You're welcome. Thanks for these. Here's a Hello. Hello, love. Hello. How's your dad? Oh, not too bad. Health line. Good. And how does he feel about us, about you going abroad? He was just luck. I asked you how he felt. Well, he didn't say exactly, not straight out anyway. What he did say were things like, mind how you go, look after yourself, especially when you're driving. Oh, he must feel it, having lost one son abroad. Do you believe in fate, though? No, not really. I think you make your own. It's just that it occurred to me when he was talking to me, but really seeing our David, that this might be fate. Me going to Jamaica like he went to Australia. I hope you're not thinking what I think you're thinking. Your trouble is you've got too much imagination. Now, you see, little dull me can only think of warmth and sea and the kids as brown as berries all the time. That's what Jamaica's going to be to us. The kids as brown as berries. Not to mention me. Do you hear? I get a good turn as well. <laughs> oh, now, whoever can that be? Well, whoever it is, tell them to go away. Oh, not if it's a tall, dark, handsome stranger. Oh, Mr. Tatlock. Oh, well, Mrs. Colwell, thank you. It's Mr. Tatlock, Andrew. Oh, evening, Albert. You know, I reckon you are nearly as well off as I am, if I didn't know different. What do you mean, Albert? Well, me being looked after hand and foot be Elder Ogden. Because I reckon she's got religion or gone bonkers, or both. And you know I'm not complaining. And here's Andrew. Living like a king, <laughs> for as long as it lasts. Well, why shouldn't it last? Oh, You'd like to know, wouldn't you? Stop your teasing, Albert. Oh. Well, uh, that come for you this afternoon. Mm. It's a postcard. Aye, I can see it is. Postmarks and Anne's. From Mrs Sharples, I shouldn't wonder. I reckon she sent it to my place because she thought Mrs Colwell was still living there. Mm. What does it say, Minnie? She's coming home. Minnie? Yes, any day now, Andrew. Mm. You know... Hilda Ogden were telling me that she saw you in your dressing gown this morning, Andrew. <laughs> I reckon Ina Sharpers would make a mountain out of that before she'd even taken her coat off. Oh, dear. Hey, Julie, I use taxis quite a lot. They're such a convenient form of transport. Aye, oh, I'll tell you what, if you ever use me, I'll do you a cheap day return. So long as it's not to Addis Ababa. Ha-ha, <laughs> I remember that. Do you live in this district? Not exactly. Oh, that reminds me. I must go and get a bite of tea before I start the nightly rally drive. Very nice to have met you, Mrs Walker. Yes, indeed. How do? How have you? Do I know that fella? Well, I don't. I've seen him before. Two pints for two hard-working fellas, please, Mrs Walker. Certainly, if you'll uh, point them out to me. I reckon that was a veiled insult. I reckon it was an unveiled insult. Just rough repartee. One picks it up from the customers. Are you going out tonight? Are you? Oh, I thought I might stay at home. You'd be waiting your time. Why? Gina's going straight home. How do you know her? I asked her. Oh, well, it's a bit early now, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. 
evening. I'm surprised that you have the nerve to come here after the Catholic you gave his premises this morning. Oh, is that all you can think about, Mrs. Walker? Material things. I'll have another of them pies, please. You are not suggesting, are you, that your thoughts are cast higher than stomach and purse? Listen, who do you think this pie's for? And the one I got at dinner time. Not for me, not for my stand. For an old gentleman who is gradually coming to realise that the world hasn't completely forgotten him, hasn't cast him aside like an old slipper, that somebody really cares. Hilda, what? what are you up to? Nothing. You have never even paid lip service to charitable work, never mind performed any. Hey, now, I'm not having that, not from you, not from anybody. Shut up, Hilda, we're trying to have a quiet pint. Well, how would you like it if you was being accused of interior motivations? Accused of what? Just because I tried to help poor old Mr Tatlock, who very soon will be losing his nearest living relative, who in the evening of his life is going to need company more than ever, who's going to be... Hilda? What? You're wasting your time. Eh? You're wasting your time. Hilda. I don't know what you're talking about. Albert hasn't got a penny, love, not a bean. Unless you're after that coin collection of his, which isn't worth a light anyway. Oh, he's bound to have some of Not a bean. Put away. One and sixpence for the pie, please, Mrs Ogden. A nest egg light. One and sixpence, please, Hilda. Was it all right? Yeah. Honestly? It was all right. You sure you're not just saying Ah, oh, darling, what else can I say? Well, you could say you liked it. I liked it. The finest fried egg I've ever had, though. My compliments to the hen. Oh, you're only saying that, I can tell. What about you, Ray? Bacon and egg? Oh, uh, <clears throat> no, thank you, darling. Look, now, don't get me wrong. I reckon your bacon and eggs will win a Nobel Peace Prize. It's just that I've, uh, uh, well, that's us, him and me, me and him together, side by side. We've got to go through that door and do a day's work, and we're late. He's right. Oh, and by the way, who's been sleeping in my bed, said the little baby bear? Meaning? Me bed, it's stinking of some oil or something. Why can't you take your boots off like I've I do? I've got a bunk of my own, mate. Well, use it, mate. Oh. Um, I was wondering if you'd mind having your dinners out. Uh, today, like, just for today. Well, we don't mind, love, but we would... Uh... Well, you see, it's my birthday. Oh, well, what do you Many know about that? You see, it's my birthday and I'm meeting me mum and we're having some of it in the Chinese. <laughs> oh, I'll answer it. <laughs> oh. Hello. Hello, Arthur. <clears throat> Yes, Arthur. Oh, thank you, Arthur. It's me brother. Yes, Arthur. See you yeah. later then, eh? Yeah. Hello, Charlie, love. Oh, don't be daft. I don't know an Arthur. They were still here. They were late. I had to say you were somebody, so I said you was me brother. Of course I do. Yeah, I fixed it. See about ten, then. Of course I do. You shouldn't ask. You've no need to ask, Minnie. It's as plain as a pike stuff. You mean there's the nose on your face? If you like, yes. She'll come gunning. Oh, you mustn't say words like that. Not in this house. Well, I'm sorry, but you know what I mean. Ina Sharples thinks that we're a tatlox. <laughs> She'll have pups when she finds out we're rehabilitating. In your domain, so to speak. Oh, well, I'm sure Ina will speak. Well, let her speak. You know, love, I've been through the Old Testament a score of times. There's a book of... Ruth and a book of Esther, but there's no book of Ina. She speaks for herself. We'll be like those two people running over that bridge, and that'll be Ina chasing us. <laughs> and you know what happened to them, don't you? They were changed into doves and flew away. Oh, I don't like flying. I don't believe in it. Oh, exactly. Now, look, Ina Sharples believes that she can boss you, and because she believes she can, she does. Now, you believe she can, and so you let her. Now, if we were to fly away like those two, those two doves, she wouldn't be able to find us to bully, and she'd lose her confidence. Oh, I don't think she'd like that. Well, she wouldn't, but she'd begin to think you're an independent woman and stop bullying you. Yes, I suppose she does bully me. She does indeed. Well, now, what do you say? Shall we lead her a bit of a dance? Well, it would be just in fun, really, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think we'll... Well, we'll uh, if you say so. I think we'll make a couple of lovely doves. <laughs> Well, why you bother to wash any roll? You just go straight to work and rub your face in axle grease. Well, at least I do wash. Not just a dab with a wet forefinger on each cheek. And then two hours making up. Do you know, it takes her longer to get that face on than it did for Rembrandt or whatever it was to paint a Mona Lisa. Now, why really? don't you get up earlier? Now, Lucy! Don't you mean why do I bother going oh, to bed? Oh, stop, stop. Both of you, my head is spinning. This is no way for people to behave to each other first thing in the morning. 
Now, don't interfere, Auntie Annie. Yeah, she's right, Mum. Don't interfere. Ta-da. Come on, our kid. I'll walk down with you. Come on, we haven't got all day. Hey. Ooh, that shaky pair of monkeys. I don't recollect having asked for your opinion on any subject, Hilda. You didn't, Mrs. Walker. I volunteered. Oh, yes. You're doing quite a lot of volunteering at present, aren't you? Now, I don't mind you trying for the OBE, the CBE, or whatever, but not in working hours. I'll do. By all oh. means, run errands for Mr. Tatlock. I'm sure he's a very worthy cause. After you have completed your day's duties in the Rover's Return, and the same goes for husbands, relatives and friends who think they have the right to call in at any moment. Working to rule cuts both ways, Hilda. Hmm. What's wrong with her? Oh, got out of bed the wrong side, Chuck. Hmm? Mind you, she's right, you know, about Albert Tatlock. I'm going to tell him I shall say Mrs Walker objects. Now, look, hold on a minute. Hold on, what for? Lem Fairclough was good as said he hadn't got two apennies to rub together. Never mind what he said. Look at it logically. I've been doing it all night. First of all, what's his soap? Mild or bitter like any other fella? No. Rum. Yeah. And why did Alice Pickens want to wed him? Aye, she did, didn't she? And why did his daughter Beady put a spoke in it? And he's only ever had one new cap in 20 years. <sighs> Arrest me case. I don't know, though, Chuck. Len, we're very certain. Hmm? Still, never mind. Won't cost us anything to find out, will it? Ah. No, but do you? Charlie, I keep saying. Honest. Charlie Braddock, I love you. There, are you satisfied? I don't deserve it. Of course you do. It's me what don't deserve it. No, no, it's me what don't deserve. Forgetting your birthday and all. Oh, don't get upset. There'll be other birthdays. I'll make it up to you. Not too much pickle. Only Tippin's not been too good just lately. I took a man to the airport last night, got him there just in time to catch his plane because I knew the shortcuts. Tanner Tip. It's all right for me, Dad, going on about the good old days. Toffs don't ride around in taxis anymore. Oh, never mind. We'll be Toffs come dinner time. You are? We're having a meal out. Anything you want on me in town. At a posh restaurant. Well, not too posh. Oh, you shouldn't. Of course I should. I want to. What about Laurel and Hardy? Oh, I told them my man was treating me and like would they eat out. <laughs> You're too good to me, chicken. Hey, I'll tell you what. I'll bring the cab round and drive you down in style. How's that, eh? Oh, what would I do without <laughs> you? Now, that is what I call a butty. I'll just nip upstairs and get some shut-eye before we go. Oh. Out wrong? Well, no. Only make sure there's no oil on your clothes. And I, I, I should use Mr Fairclough's bed. I don't think his sense of smell's as strong as Mr Langton's. Oh. Well, do you think they'll do? Oh, yes, they'll do. Shall I eat them now or are they for somebody else? Like who? Ina Sharples? I doubt that. Minnie Caldwell? I doubt that, too. No names, no... no pack exactly. exactly. Well, you can't blame a girl for asking. Wrap it up. Oh. Well, hello, oh, mate. You sloped off, didn't you? No, I did not slope. I slanted. And then I came in here for a box of matches. <clears throat> and now I'm just popping back home, you see, because I've left my pencil in the other jacket. I've got pencils. HB? HB, MD and HB. Any B pencil you like. There you are, mate. Thanks, mate. You're welcome, mate. Hey, job. Oh, yes, the job. Hmm. Coming? No, no, I've got to buy a few uh, essentials first. You, uh, you won't be calling home first. I won't be calling home. Five minutes? Five minutes. All right. Mm. I'll, uh, I'll pick them things up later on. Oh. Suit yourself. Hello. 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 Well, shall we start with a prayer or a couple of hymns? No, no, serve them, love. I'll wait. I'm going out with Lynn. Uh, we don't really want to buy anything. Oh, it must be a couple of hymns then. Who's starting? Any requests? Well, Ina Sharples is coming home and she's going to be a bit narked when she finds I've moved in with Mrs Colwell. Oh, nothing <laughs> improper, of course. No, but uh, we just want to keep her job away until she gets used to the idea. <laughs> like them doves. <laughs> doves? <laughs> Aye. So we wondered if you could, uh, well, keep your fires banked up. Uh, or watch your play school on your telly. Actually, my telly's on the blink. Go on, you can brew up for me if you like, and for yourselves as well. Well, no, very accommodating of you, thank you. Yeah, oh, thank right. you, love. Thank you very much, love. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, I'll probably get six months for aiding and abetting. You don't want hiding as well, do you, Len? Uh, no, love, I want a birthday present for a very dear friend of mine. 
Female? Of course. Young and attractive? Of course. Right, well, how about something like this? Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Old time is still a-flying. The same flower... Yeah. Oh, no, you don't, Kenneth Barlow. Oh, yes, I do, Varibala. That is a book. Yes, and the teapot that my mother gave us to a tea was a teapot. But you know you said we're not taking a boatload of junk with us, you said. You can't compare a book to a teapot. Oh, yes, I can. There's far more sentiment attached to that teapot than any of that rubbish. Rubbish? That's what I said. That rubbish, as you call it, pays for the rent. It also buys the tea that goes in the pot. All right, well, the next time you ask for a cup of tea, you can have the complete works of William Shakespeare. Women's logic. Well, Uncle Albert, looks like you better earn yourself a couple of quid flogging this at the second-hand bookshop. Oh, well, I'll just sort. Uncle Albert? Well, I mean, the road you two are going on about these things, you, you don't want to part with them and you can't take them with you. I reckon the best thing I can do is look after them for you. My house. Hey, oh, I'm sorry. I just popped in to see if there was out I could do for Mr. Tatler. Yes, there are one or two things. Look. Oh, there's something I wish you could do for me, Hilda. I have my smallpox vaccination. Oh, ah. look at the time, Ken. Yeah. We've got to be at the docks in half an hour and pick the kids up before. I guess who's laughing? I had mine done before we went to the States, you know. But never mind, love. I'll come along and hold your hand and watch you wince. Mm. Well, it's very good of you, Uncle Albert, but uh, are you sure you don't want to flog them? No, no, I'm Oh, come on, Ken. We're going yeah, well, I suppose you can say that when you've got a bob or two. A bob or two? Me? Yeah, you. Hey, have you ever heard that saying, when the soles of your shoes have worn through your back on your feet again? No. Ah, well, you've heard it now, and it refers to me. Do you mean you've gotten out? Well, I've got me health. Oh, I see. Well, in future you can do your own running about and get a bit healthier. You should be had up, you should, for fraudulent conversion. Oh, and what have I converted? Me into a flipping charity worker and the promise of getting me reward. Yeah, well, you will get your reward. I will. Yeah, in heaven. Oh, fat lot of you, that'll be. If you've got no money down here, you're not likely to have any up there. And any road, even if they give back pay, I don't suppose they'd be selling the sort of things I want to buy. And uh, you wouldn't like to buy me a box of chocolates, would you? What for? Oh, you're dead gallant, you, aren't you? Because you like me. Do I? <laughs> yeah, it's better than any girl you've ever met. All right. Next Christmas. Oh, what a pity they won't keep her. Just had three boxes, you see. So one to Len and one to Ray. For a very dear friend, they said. Dear. Hm, if you ask me, Costler. <laughs> Mice? No, it's a fella to keep in the back for when it gets a bit quiet, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, get him to buy your chocolates, then. Uh, what were you saying about Len and Ray? I said that girl that's living with them, you know, well, she's very, very costly. You'd think she was keeping four instead of two. Oh, hello, Mrs Sharples. Hello. I'm looking for Millie Colwell. Are you? She's not at Tatlock's. Ain't she? Oh, she won't be, will she? They've gone round to Minnie's. They've? Yeah. Minnie and Handel Gartsay. I think you're wrong there, Billy. Oh, oh when my back's turned, that's what she does, is it? Minnie Colwell, the scarlet woman, living in sin. Right, we'll just have to find her, won't we? Oh, you know what you want, don't you? I only told the truth. And so you should, Billy, always. Do you think we could stop a bit longer, Irma? I think you'd better. <laughs> seen you before in the pub. Oh, I. I live quite close by. Oh, I. Cinderella, eh? Uh, you don't mind? Me mum phoning and me going out. Have a good time, love. We we'll see you tonight, kid. Just a minute. Uh, just take that young lady wherever she wants to go. Oh, charm, eh? <laughs> Couple of little helps, eh? <laughs> Charity begins at home. Ah, and ends there according to you. And why not? Why flipping not? What's charity done for me and my good lady, eh? Good lady? 
lady oh. is right, you know. About you being a good lady. About charity. Now, where does my Stan's income tax go, for instance? I'm buying battleships off rich people what sells battleships. Not on flipping charity. The thoughts of mousy tongue, Elizabeth. Oh. You know what to talk about your turbine, have you? I'm not said anything. Your husband's got a good job, hasn't he? Are you to him looking after him, are you, Eckers like? You're here night after night making extra lolly. Yeah. And you don't give free beer to a poor fellow what's hard up, do you, Mrs Walker? And it was you what wouldn't let me help poor old Mr Tatlock in your business hours, wasn't it? Listen, you are splitting hairs. I do my share of good works. I agree with St Paul. Pay, hope, charity. These three. And the greatest of these is charity. And I bet he made a bomb out of his memoirs, didn't he? He was put Death. Writing about charity, probably. You know, I don't know which is worse, having the injection yourself or watching your wife have it. I know. You work and I'll sweat. Yeah, something like that. You know, I watched the needle going in and the doctor looked up and said, Are you all right, Mr Barlow? I'm not kidding, I nearly fainted. <laughs> what were you like when the twins were born? Oh, we had a rough time. <laughs> <laughs> where are they? Pardon, Mrs Shelfless. I said, where are they? Where are whom? Romeo and Juliet. Ooh. Is it still sore? Mm, the kids aren't too good either. They're having to lie down. Ooh, is it worth it? Well, is it, Val? Is it worth it? Leaving round here? Mm. I don't know. I've been that busy, I haven't had time to think. Oh, he wasn't really gentle. I wish I was off for sun-drenched beaches and palm trees. You'd have to have vaccinations. Mm, I don't think that'd bother me. Hey, do you know what I do sometimes? I lie in bed before it's time to get up and I pretend I'm in this posh European hotel and I've got to get the Orient Express because there's this fellow waiting in Istanbul wearing a white carnation. Then I have to fight Billy Walker for the bathroom. <laughs> oh, and you miss the train. Every flaming morning. <laughs> so if you see a fellow in Jamaica with wearing a white carnation who's got fed up waiting in Istanbul, you will tell him what's happening, won't you? <laughs> Is it a shop? Oh, it looks like it, doesn't it? Uh, Mrs Colwell and I were wondering if we could do some babysitting for you. Oh, we thought you might have a lot to do with going to foreign parts. Oh, would you? Please. Because yeah, yeah. I've got to go to the shops and uh, the kids aren't feeling too well. Oh. I've got to get some toothpaste and uh, handkerchief. Oh, thanks, sir. And a thermos flask. I'll come with you and help carry. You know, right. Really I've got to get some money off Ken first because he always hands on. Well, don't worry, if the currents is coconuts where you're going, maybe you'll be more generous. <laughs> They're just feeling a bit feverish after their injections, that's oh, right. right. Okay. Long. All right, love. Right. Right. Oh, I'm feeling a bit worried myself. You know, you know what, what that's because. I know what it's because. It's because of Ina, and I think we should surrender. What, do you mean go out waving a white flag? We've nothing to surrender for. We've, we've done nothing wrong. Well, we've avoided her. Well, avoiding Ina's not a sin. Well, you heard what she said about us in the corner shop. No, Minnie. We'll leave her alone. Well, I still think that we should give ourselves up. Whenever I move out, the devil moves in. But I've noticed him drinking in here, not unless Mrs Walker served him. You know what I mean. Minnie Colwell and Andal Garth had hiding behind trees like Adam and Eve, and that girl moving out of Fairclough's like Salome. Oh, never no, mind, love. You're back now, so the devil can take the next bus home. Well, as far as that pair are concerned, he can, when I find them. Don't worry, I'll come round from time to time. Now, look, I don't want any of that Salvation Army treatment. I'll come as a neighbour. Well, how will I know that you're not after the money that I haven't got? Because you've just told me you haven't got. No, no, I, I want more of that, love. I, I want the companionship of somebody near than my own age, now that Valerie and Ken are going. Hey, why don't you take pot look? You know, advertise in the corner huh? shop, like Len and Ray did. You know, say so that you'll give living accommodation for light housework. They'll become swarming. Look, I'll even write the advert for you. Yeah, uh, listen, I'm not made of money, love. Oh, yes, you are. Come on, two quid. Are you this mean with Elsie? Oh, much meaner. I knock her down if she mentions money. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've had all those bills to settle out. Excuse me, Val, have you seen the Nicole well? Yes, I've just left them in the flat. Can I use your telephone, love? Yeah, help yourself. Oh, come on, Ken. I want two quid for essentials. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, give it to her. Don't go. All right, come on, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll give you three then. You've got to stop buying these large brandies. Yeah. Have you been buying large brandies? Not many, not many. You liar! Hello, if you've been buying drink, you can give me some money. Are you coming? Well, you rotten devil. Come on, the lady's always winning the end, you know that. Is that hot lips? What do you mean, hot lips? You know very well who I am, and I know very well who you are.
It's like nothing of the sort. You've got all of the wrong end of the stick. Uh, no, Minnie's not here. Well, she doesn't want to make a statement at the moment. She insists on speaking to you. Hello, Ina. Did you have a good time? No, and you won't have a good time when I see you. I'm <coughs> tired now and I'm going home, but I'll be round at your house first thing tomorrow morning for a full explanation. Trouble, Mrs. Sharples. No, they can't be cured, any Walker. Let's say the day of judgment is nigh. She's just turning the corner. Oh, dear. She looked up and she looked very angry. Well, as Fred Astaire said, there may be trouble ahead, but oh. let's face the music and dance. Oh, no, I don't feel like dancing. Oh, don't let me stop you. You go ahead. There's plenty of room. <laughs> uh, we've been winding the twins for Val, but I think we'd better go now. Oh, don't you want to dance, then? Uh, no, thank you. I, I don't think Andrew does either. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. right Thank you very, very much. much. OK, bye-bye. Yes, bye-bye. Cheerio. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Ah, I've just popped round to the logbook for that Oh, car. yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Here it is somewhere. And the MOT's inside. Oh, good. Should get a good price for it. Works like a dream when you say the owner's going abroad. Well, I hope so. I need all the money I can get to hire another ship to carry all this junk and Val. Just look at it. Just look at all that rubbish. Could be worse. She could have packed the kitchen sink. Yeah, and you know what? She tried to tell me I couldn't take these books with me, so I... Anyway, she's in for a big surprise. These books are crossing the briny with me. I don't agree with Alan. Women don't always win. <laughs> See, free living accommodation for a clean, respectable lady in exchange for our light household duties for a respectable elderly military gentleman. <laughs> well, he tried to be respectable, I'll give him that. He'll kill him that, you know. <laughs> Women will leave their husbands, leave their homes. He's got this idea from yours. Ours did say uh, young, attractive. Not respectable. Not respectable. Is she a bit... Uh... Well, I wouldn't know. Is that why you're buying the chocolates to find out? <laughs> I must admit I'm testing her. Oh, I see. And if uh, she isn't that, will you have to get rid of her? Well, for Ray's sake, I mean, he is a bit young, isn't he? On the other hand, I might have to get rid of Ray. Why don't you see what his views are? No. Yeah. I know what you want. So do I, darling. And uh, I'll pick up that box I bought, I know. You know, I think he's got the same views as you. Ah. <clears throat> Funny thing, you know, um... I was just sawing through a plank on some trestles down at the yard and it suddenly mm -hmm. started going up and down like a seesaw. Mm -hmm. Very strange, that, I thought, because my good friend and trusted partner should be kneeling on this plank to keep it firm. I knew you'd be following. That's why I didn't bother telling you. Six o'clock finish, he said, not four. All's fair. Oh, well, I suppose it'll be a nice surprise for her when we both turn up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, how could I help it with you? Honest. Yeah, it was smashing. I like them prawns, too. I always like prawns. Oh, well, I'll get you some and do them for you tomorrow. Do they like prawns? Oh, I don't know. The best way is just to give them to them and find out. As long as you like prawns. Hey, look at the time. I'd better go upstairs and have a shave before we go off. Oh, you're all right. They don't finish while six. Then they usually call in at the Rovers for a bit. Oh, still, though. Behind it, though, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, darling. Hmm. May happiness come your way on this your birthday. And I didn't get that off a card. You know it come out of my head. It sounds like it and all. Have you had a nice yeah. time? Have you finished work? Oh, never mind about work. Have you had a nice time? Oh, never mind if I had a nice time. Have you finished work? Gina! Yes, it was very nice. All these fellas ever buy me new blooming 
in razor blades. Hey. I, I think you three have met. This is Charlie. They are. You know they want to take these buckets and spades with them, don't you? Sorry, love, I didn't catch Just you. those. Oh, yes, I know. It's like a trip to the seaside. Yeah, well, as far as I'm concerned, that's just about all it is. Are you uh, sure you want to go? No. Well, it's too late. Oh, I hate this bit. It's so different with everything gone. It's just like a... Well, like a room. Yeah. Well, that's all it is. We just disguised it for a while. Mm. Bricks and mortar don't care who live in them. Doesn't it get you? It doesn't seem like home anymore. It doesn't anymore, love. And by the time the dealers men have been tomorrow, there'll be nothing left here to say that the Barlow's slept here. And I suppose there'll be other people moving in and everything. Yep, and somewhere in Jamaica, in some palatial apartment, there'll be some other people moving out thinking the same thing. I hope. It was you who talked me into it. I said Eileen Huskisson. I took you into Just it. Just because you fancied her. It was you that fancied her, mate. She had you around her little finger from the word go. Oh, let's drop it. We were taken for a ride. Morning. Morning, shipmates. It's you. Well, it's not a brass monkey. Not this weather, any well, What can we do you for? Ah, well, it's about a water geezer. I want one at the garage. Can you two do it, or should I get a plumber? Very comical. No, oh, only I'd heard you'd gone into the bread and breakfast line, well, like. If you want a water geezer on your wall and not down your throat, you better up it, mate. It touch you, yeah. Still, it's not surprising, really. I mean, she did make you look a right pair. I'm warning line. you. Do you realise they must have been at it all week? Seven days, I reckon. Yeah. Every time we saw him, how do you do? <laughs> Every time we went in the rovers, there he was. Sup in. Every time we walked in. Then he'd be away. Come back here, eating all our grub. And the rest. And the rest. Oh, you're giving him the boot now, haven't you? <laughs> you haven't? Well, not exactly, no. It was her birthday. Well, she said it was. I mean, that's what really makes you want to spit, isn't it? After all that, and we even gave her flaming birthday presents, this morning she just doesn't show up. And she didn't even ring up, either. I always <laughs> thought there was something funny from the word go, though, you know. I mean, a cracking bit of stuff like that. Doing a job like this. You! To... Sorry, I'm late. Hey, huh? you can give it to her now. Huh? The boot, I mean. Hello? Terrible cold, isn't it? I stood at that bus stop 20 minutes. My feet are like blocks of ice. Well, you, you did get here, then. Yeah, well, the real trouble was my birthday party last night. I mean, you know how it is. Oh, a bit hungover, eh? Yes, I thought that's what it'd be. I was just saying to Len. Hey, I must tell you, them tights you bought me. Well, last night at this club in the lights, they looked terrific. All the fellas said. Oh, well, I did think they were very you-like. Yeah, well, you don't often meet a fellow that can just hit the right thing like that. I mean, my Charlie's got no idea at all. Mm. He's useless. Mm. He's not the only one, is he? Anyway, you'd all better clear off now, cos I've got to get started. Yeah, well, uh, come on. Yes, right, dinner usual time. Half past twelve, not a minute sooner. See you later, then. See you dinner time. Oh, hey. like putty. And I thought you two could handle women. Get it out. Remember Les McGee? Did he tie me up to the Liberal Club railings for an whole afternoon just because I bashed his kid brother? <laughs> yeah, well, he's moved on a bit since then. Same general style, but he uses aftershave now, if you get me. Uh, I think I do, yes. Mm. Fellas. Now, don't say they're all alike, because they're not. They're not? No, some of them's got red hair. <laughs> Haven't they, Mr Tatlock? Eh? Why didn't I think of saying that? They all talk about it, you know, Mr Tatlock, your powers of observation. Now, look, I've come in here to pick up the replies from the advertisement for Nousekeeper, so as I can get started interviewing. Oh, well, there hasn't been a stampede, you know. I mean, there was a couple of can-can dancers and a gaiety girl, and I says to myself, no, that's not what Mr Tatlock's looking for. No, and it isn't. How many serious replies have you had? In all. None. None? Uh, it's early days, yeah. Look, you keep out of this. Like it's not, it's your fault the way you wrote out the advertisement. What's wrong with it? Apply within, that's what's wrong with it. How do you make that out? Well, it only stands to reason. You should have put my address on it. It puts them off, this apply within. Don't be daft, everybody. You don't will... think, do you? You know folks don't like it broadcast, that they're going around looking for jobs. You know all the gossip that goes on in shops. Yeah, well, it was just so that you wouldn't uh, be bothered with the nuisance calls, like. Well, I'm not being bothered by anybody, am I? And what's the good of that? Oh, come on. Oh, lovely eyelashes, though, aren't they? <laughs> 
It's oh. nice and off and a quarter of tea. Right, love. Hello. Oh, you are growing a big girl. Look what you caught him. No, nobody will have me. Well, count your blessings. Okay. You know they're knocking me down come next April. Oh, you look all right to me. Our Nelly's going and all demolished, oh. you know. They're all coming down. Developing like. Only why I say it is because I've seen that card in the window. Oh, I to just do you that. I suppose you know the gentleman in this street, is he? That's right, let's draw to Rovers. Not that Mr. Fairclough. No, it'd be a man by the name of Tatlock. Oh, <laughs> him. Shall I tell him uh, he was asking about it? Well, if you like. And you can tell him I'd sooner stop it rubble and all. I met him. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it were very different circumstances to, to when you went away. Oh, yes, oh, well, that was a case of necessity. But I never had any cause to regret it. I hope Kenneth can say the same in the years to come. Oh, uh, oh, I'm sure he'll make a go of it. He's mm. always been very industrious. Yes, and he's not the only one. I could name one or two that's mm. been very industrious behind my back. Well, I'm not going to pretend that I don't know what you mean, either, but I will pretend that I haven't noticed that you've been very rude, considering... Considering what? Well, considering that you haven't seen your friends for some time, and if that's the best you can manage in the way of an Audi, do you can stop away. All right, what have you been feeding her? Well, I'm not going to try being sarcastic back in, because I'm not very good at it, but I'm not having you getting on your eye horse over me. Oh, well, the say attack is the best form of defence you're learning, aren't you? Oh, no, I'm not, because I've got nothing to defend. Well, I was going to give the pair of you the length of my tongue, but I'm beginning to think you might be good for her. I am. Right, well, you can be good for me and get me a drink in. Uh, Betty? Yes, love? Uh, milk stout, please. Yes. But we was talking about Handel when he was uh, going emigrating, like what Kenneth's doing now. Well, a lot have gone from round here, you know. Oh, yes, I remember when Cassie McIntyre went. Well, that was some time back now, at uh, Australia. Yes, and there was a bit more room when they'd gone and all. And she had some more when they got there. Uh, 12 or 13, all told. Well, that's what they want, you know, these places, people. When Cassie McIntyre went, they had to do what folk are still talking about. In fact, some folks are still recovering from it. <laughs> I believe Milado was having one. Oh, yes, Ina, we've all been invited. Oh, if I'll leave all that to you, then, Mrs. Walker. Exactly how many have been invited? Oh, you name them, they're invited. <laughs> well, I always think that an attractive running buffet meets all the requirements. Now, we have coped with several memorable occasions of that sort in this house. Nobody's ever complained. Well, there aren't many landladies who can say that, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> I'm in your hands. Mm. But uh, you can only get what you pay for, so if you give me a rough idea... Of I what... wouldn't think of it, Kenneth. Yeah. Certainly not. We are going to send you off in style. And in my book, I can't speak for others in my position, but in my book, it certainly would not be in style to present you with a bill. No, indeed. Well, that's very good of you, Mrs. Oh, Walker. not Thank at you. all. Thank you. <clears throat> Don't fret, love. It's the salt in the sandwiches. You know, it soon recovers the cost. That is an ignoble thought, Betty. Oh, Gio, I'd do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Squire. Close your eyes, no doubt you're Oh, no, I've been caught like that before. Oh, not this time, mate. Not 50, not 100, but 130 nicker, all yours. There you are. You got all that? Ah, you're looking at a first-class salesman, mate. He's a lousy mechanic, but he's a smooth talker. <laughs> I only paid 150 for it. Come on, love, don't let it get cold. Steak and kidney smashing. You need something a bit solid this weather. You'll have me getting fat. Oh, cuddly. Oh, I can't let their pudding on the gas. Are you sure they don't mind me being here? No, honestly, they were ever so nice about it. They didn't say a word this morning. I was sure they would. It's fantastic, that. You must be dimmer than they look. I feel a bit mean, you know. Maybe we should have booked a table. No, I think we must be setting sitting. Come on, fellas. Lots more where this come from. You don't mind me starting before you. Carry on, mate. Only I've got to be off, like. Steak and kidney. Charlie thrives on it. Marvellous. Um, well, you want a cup of tea before you go back to work, Charlie? You better tell him, love. I don't think we can. Tell him what, love? Well, it can't be she's brought the mice and dinner service because we haven't got one. Come on, let's be a minute. Well, it's... Oh, and you've been so nice to me and everything. And to myself, like, very sporting. But, um, I'm not coming in tomorrow. Why not? Well, cos, uh, uh, sorry, fellas, but I found her a better billet. 
Uh, not that she hasn't been very happy here, because she has, but, uh, well, it's not the ideal arrangement. Not for us, you see. I, I'd noticed it wasn't the ideal arrangement, too. It's me, you see. I was trying to put my finger on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, this is a lot better than her last place, uh, but this time I've really got her fixed up a lovely little number. You know, more suburban-like. Uh, a fellow what works in town. Sort of pinstripe bloke, you know. Oh, and been none of this, how's your father, with him coming in and out every minute. Um, he's a more regular sort of, you know... Well, I must admit, I was very embarrassed yesterday, you two walking in like that. Yes, I thought I was pretty brass-faced. Aye, well, you see how it is, don't you? Yeah, we flaming do, mate, we do. Oh, I mean, me being on nights and all, the cab, you know, taking turn and turn about with me dad. And her mother and all. <laughs> can't stick me, her mother. I wonder why. Well, you can't please everyone, can you? <laughs> anyway, the upshot of it is we never see each other. This is the only way we can get a bit of time together, private-like. Her taking a domestic job. That was me dad's idea. Dead smart, me dad. Has your ma got any bright ideas or no? Yeah. Well, I'll be seeing you then, fellas, and, uh, well, thanks a million. You've been a real couple of aces. Cheerio, love. Sorry I can't stop. I'll pick you up at about six. All right. Charlie, me darling, you can pick her up now, right now. That's very right, Charlie. It's been lovely knowing you, but enough is flaming enough. Oh, I don't mind stopping till the usual time, honest. Yeah, but with Charlie being away, you'll have now to occupy yourself, will you? There's no need to be like that. I'll tell you what, sweetheart, I'll take Charlie's place and you can work out your notice. Get your coat, love. There's no need to stand for that. And you want to watch it, mate. Oh! <laughs> Honest, I'm sorry. I just wish you could see it from our side. Don't bother, love. Come on. Well, you see, there's, there's me wages. M money. Money? Well, uh, how much? Ten quid, mate. <clears throat> Less two. That's for Charlie's scoff. Less another one. That's for this afternoon. Hey, she was quite willing to work the full day. Yeah, you look at you arguing, mate. Well, if you're going to be like I that... I am. Oh, come on, love. Let's forget it. Well, it's been nice. No hard feelings, eh? I'll tell you this, you'll not get another one like her. And I hope that pudding chokes you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought you were going to disembowel him then when he said about this nice little place in the suburbs. You know, if he'd have been a different kind of fella... Yeah, none of this how's your father. ...but I kicked his teeth in. Hey, you know that crack about choking on the pudding? By the look of it, it could come true. Jackson's? Jackson's it is. Hey, ever been flaming out? Hello. Hi. Hey, I mean, if you wrote it down, nobody would believe you, would they? It's always the way, isn't it? Hello, Ken. Ken it. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <coughs> Nostalgia. I mean, you're a long last lingering look, eh? Yeah, something like that. And laughing your boots off, I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the cheek to charge me a bob. Well, we don't guarantee results, you know. Look, it's no joke. It's a matter of emergency to me. I know that, honestly, but what do you want me to do? I can't go in the streets and drag them in, can I? You'll have to wait, that's all. I know, and the longer I wait, the more brass I'm putting in your pocket, aren't I? I wonder you're laughing. Mm. Hello. Hello. Did he just join in the First World War, or did he actually start it? Well, either way, it worked, no laughing matter. I know that, but you should have heard him going on at me just because nobody's answered his flipping advertisement. Nobody. Oh, well, that's what I've told him. One or two come in, but, you know, as soon as they heard it was him, like. I see. Well, I couldn't tell him that, could I? Oh, well, he's made his bed. Poor fella. Squire, you must have given your farewells to every crumbling brick in the place. Oh, I'm not that sentimental. Oh, well, keep smiling. Have a chip. Oh, right. Here, your last genuine Jackson's chip. Off last Sunday's scandal sheet. Not exactly hygienic, but it does give it a bit of spice. Ho ho! Yeah, hey, well, <laughs> what is all this? Anyway, what happened to that little, you know, that little Dolly Bird? Yeah? Oh no, it was only a rumour. No, pull the other one. Ah, oh, she wasn't real, you see, just a figment of our imagination. It's the only explanation. I see, I think. Ah. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, talking of rumours, I hear there's a little farewell do at the Rovers tonight. I hope you'll be there. We'll be there, Squire. Yeah. Uh, Ray. Huh? Give us another chip. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, you've got to come, Uncle Albert. No. No, as far as I'm concerned, it would only make it worse. I'd be a blight on the proceedings. Oh, never. No. Well, at least drop in, even if you don't stay. Oh, my mind's made up. Not, not, not that I don't wish you well, because I do. I know, love. You see, when you've gone, I'd have nobody else. And I, I don't fancy drinking to that. I know, but... You see, it's Ken's life, and I've got to go where he goes. But, uh, look, I I'll tell you what I would like. You you'll want somebody to look after the twins tonight, won't uh, you? Well, we've... Oh, would you like to have them? Well, I wouldn't ask else. And they could stop tonight. Oh, yes, that's a smashing idea. Ah, well, hey, where are they now? They're at Mrs Caldwell. She's giving them the tea. Oh, yeah, she would try and muscle in, she would. You know, she's jealous of me uh, with them two. No, she's not. Shall I tell her to bring them round, then, later? Yeah. Hello. I uh, forgot those plastic bags that you wanted. Oh, Uncle Albert. Oh, mate. Well, look, I'll be off then and I'll get the beds heard. <laughs> you taking in lodgers then? The twins tonight. Oh, how did you manage to pound them off with Uncle Albert? I didn't. He asked if he could. He doesn't want to come to the party, you know. Ah, oh, poor Uncle Albert. He's upset, you know. Well, I can't be helped, though. <sighs> Do we have to have a party? Oh, what would you sooner? Oh, you know, just... Spend it here, just the two of us. Nothing special. Do you mean to say that there's nothing special about the two Oh, you know what I mean. I mean, a party's all right, but there's something... Oh, I don't know. About like your last night in your home. Well, only this morning you were saying it already didn't seem like... Uh... Oh, I'll enjoy having a drink with everybody. I don't mean that. All right, well, I'll tell you what we do. I know what you mean. We'll nip out early, shall we? There'll be no kids here waking up and coming in. We're going to have it all to ourselves. Mmm, I'm with you. But, first of all, the Rovers. Once they've had a few, we'll be able to slip out. But you try to do them out of free scoff and free booze, and they'll be held to pay. Anyway, listen, I've got to return a couple of books. Is there anything else you want me to do? Uh, no, it was only the plastic bags. Will you stop off at uh, Inkerman Street and tell Mrs Baxter that it's all right about the kids after all? Yeah, OK. And look, don't bother making any tea, love. I'll go straight to the railroads, OK? Oh, not in that shirt. Look, there's nothing wrong with this oh, shirt. Oh, yeah, look, I've just ironed you no, one clean. Quiet. This one's perfectly all right. Now, see you at the railroads. And don't be late. Now, we'll need a few more crates of pail, won't we? So ask Miller to help when he comes in. You'll be able to stand a siege at the back of this bar by the time you've finished. Shall I go and fetch the food in? No, love, I think we'll leave the oh. buffet for a while. The early birds may catch the worms, but they'll have to wait for my canapes. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, Antony. In fact, quite tasty as worms go. Lucille, please. Not as the way the smoked salmon spread, you know, comes out of the tube. That'll be quite enough of that. And leave the food alone, thank you. Oh, but I'm a compulsive eater. It's because no one loves me. <laughs> for once, Albert Tatlock does have my sympathy. Oh, he's not as bad as folk make out. Oh, he's most likely every bit as bad, but that doesn't exclude him from sympathy. No, it was what made his life worth living, going round to Val's of a morning to have a grumble. Hmm. It was what he got up of a morning for. <laughs> well, look who's here. Positively final appearance by public demand. <laughs> Usual love. Yes, please. Yeah. Hey, this time next week you'll be there, I should think. No, 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 we're going to stop at Val's mother until Monday. Now, oh. this time next week we should be just about sneaking up on the Azores. Oh, you lucky beggars. Um, Betty, have you got anything to eat? I don't feel like starting one of these dudes on an empty tummy, you know. Well, there's quite a lot of stuff done, so seeing as it's you. Ah, OK. <laughs> Am I looking sensational? Oh, wow, wow, wow. Pure dynamite. Yeah, I thought you might say that. Pity there'll be no-one to blow up now you were going. Ah. <laughs> Kenneth, this is a very sad evening for me. Oh, well, for me too, Mrs Walker. Yeah. Intelligent conversation will die the death in this street, and that I shall sorely miss. But I've seen this day coming, and all I have to say... Auntie can... Annie, don't you think it's a bit early for speechifying just yet? Yes, and don't you think you should wait until they're both here? Oh, uh, you have invited your wife, uh, Oh, you? yes, she'll yeah. be along in no time. She's oh. just fixing her wig, you know. Oh, 
Here we are, then. Come to see you get a proper send-off. Ah, I just wish you all the best, you know. Sam's yeah. even dug out uh, his typing while he found outside the Conservative Club. Oh, you embarrass your women, don't you? <laughs> oh, get away. Who was he dug your tie out in the first place, any road? I said, you'll see him off proper, I said. Oh, no, if you all. don't shut up, I think we'll see you off. Well, tell him where your tie was. Go on, tell him. Oh, huh? shut up, the pair of you. We'd soon have a party. <laughs> right. Well, seeing as it's me that's sailing, I suppose it's up to me to be the first to push the boat out. Mine's a pipe. OK. And uh, I'll have a James Bond. <laughs> what? Well, you know what he always has, a vodka teeny. Oh, well, so long as it's a vodka teeny weeny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Indy, a scream. Yeah. Hey, we're going to miss your way with words, you know, can. <laughs> Them of us won't can appreciate it. Oh, Mr Sharples, would you care to join us? Hey, I thought you were never going to ask me. Oh, as soon as we get some service. <laughs> oh, yeah, ah. Chuck, I said you'd be all right. Mrs Walker? You've done us proud. Oh, it's you not all here, it. Kenneth. I thought it was wise to hold some back. Ah, oh, great. Well, now, let's see what it is. Two pints and um, a pint for you, Mr. Gartside. Please. A milk stout. Yes, please. Um, the sherry. Sure. And uh, one vodka oh, teeny. Sure. Shaken, not stirred, Hilda. Eh? Oh, uh, yeah, it is freezing, isn't it? They say there's worse to come, you know. <clears throat> Your vow wants to get a bit of a move on. Why don't you give her a ring, love? Oh, yeah, I will. Um, is that all right, Mrs. Walker? Are you sure the first Oh, ring, do, well? Kenneth, do. do. But you've no idea. When I got the dress out, the hem had come unpicked. And. <laughs> Look, you just have to wait. I haven't got another dress, and my hair's still wet. Well, come as you are. Wet hair, no dress, it's all the rage. Don't be so bashful. Oh, come on, got to put your face on. Look, we're... why not come with the one that God gave you? We both happen to like it. Look, give me about half an hour. Well, 20 minutes, and I'll be fit to be seen. Yes, well, you're my husband, so it's a bit different. <laughs> That's a bit cheeky, even for you. <laughs> Soon as I can. Bye. <coughs> yeah, she'll, um, she'll be along in about half an hour. I suppose we'd better get down there. I'll try and sound a bit keen. You're not going to a flaming wake. Well, I'm not very keen, actually. This is one bevy I could do without. You're not sorry to see him go, are you? Yes, I am, as it happens. Well, I mean, you know that time when everybody was talking and that? I remember. <clears throat> well, it wasn't all friendship, not on my part. <laughs> I think she's all right, is our Val. In fact, I think she's a lot more than all right. You know, he's a lucky fella, Ken Barlow. Her and Jamaica. Go on, then. Down. 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 Down.